This is Watkins. Welcome with Bridget Fetacy. I'm Bridget Fetacy, and you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know the drill. Please subscribe, rate, comment, share, reach out, tell your friends, send smoke signals, whatever. We love your feedback and we want to hear from you. Our sponsor this week is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash walkin where our listeners get two free months of premium membership. That's two months free at Skillshare.com dot com slash walk in this week on the podcast we welcome coach t coach t is a dj sound engineer producer and podcast personality best known for his work on all three seasons of jeff ross presents roast battle on comedy central coach t has been one of the most sought after djs in the comedy world spinning weekly at the world famous comedy store in hollywood california coach has and will continue his journey of using his gifts and talents to enhance those around him progress art and work from a place of love all while putting smiles on faces and laughs in the belly. I hope you guys have fun. Coach T. What's going on? He's back. Yeah. So happy to have you back. I, I can't think of nothing I'd rather do today. The world has changed drastically since it we has. last spoke. It has. <laughs> You're in much better shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's something going on. What's going on out there? I. It's funny because in some ways... Nothing's going on. Yeah. Like you go about your, that's the weird thing about yeah. this. The disconnect is you go about your day, uh -huh. you're working, you're doing your thing. You're like getting shit done. Not an issue. And then suddenly, cause I live kind of in a place where it's like a empty vacuous crossroads where everything happens around me. Uh -huh. And then suddenly it'll be like just sirens everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's very interesting. I've never seen anything like it. No, and I I think you and I were talking right before we started recording, and like you said, there's 13 conversations to be had. Yeah, it's like, which one do you want to have? Which one should we start with? You know what? I'm like really lit today. If you would have talked to what me- are you, What are you lit about? I have so much clarity today. Okay. So if you would have talked to me yesterday- it would it wouldn't be that good. Okay. But today I have so much clarity. What did you what changed between yesterday and today? Uh the uh, spiritual alignment. Okay. Just me understanding God's presence. Okay. Brought a lot of clarity. And so like, okay, now I can speak. And I'm glad because you have such a great platform. Yeah. And I didn't want to be charged up. Well, so no, I'm, it's good to be charged up. Because I'm going to sound, you know, less emotional than I was yesterday. I almost killed a guy on a, <laughs> on a fucking scooter. Like, yeah, well. He was on a scooter and he was like, hey, and I was walking my dog. But like the instinct was like, he doesn't know he almost died, but that's why I was like, oh, I got to check myself. Like, yeah. what's going on? Let's get centered. Let's, yeah. start to, let's start, you know, decompressing some of these things. Okay, but what were you emotional about yesterday? Uh, just protecting my my family. Right. Just making sure that my family was good. I don't care about my belongings. Just my wife. I'm like, is she good? Can I still do the things that that matter to me? And then when I realized that she's not only good, she's exactly where she needs to be. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Then I just started understanding what was going on as opposed to responding to it. Right. And then once I had an understanding, I was like, oh, okay, all right, cool. Now Good I know in I the sense of like her safety. Yeah, I was concerned because, you know, where the protest is going. Yep. You know, I work, you know, 10 hour, 10 hour shifts. Okay. So I was like, oh, that was really kind of fucking with me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I had to reorganize some things. And now we're like, oh, we're good now. I mean, okay. good. We're better than we could ever be. Okay. It's so good that I can almost feel a higher power moving. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, you just need to chill out, pay attention and try to, you know, serve. So what what do you think is going on in, in, of the 13 conversations we need to have? Where <sighs> where do you start? Shit, how about this, uh, this new white cult called Black Lives Matter? <laughs> <laughs> you tweeted that the other day and I was laughing so hard. <laughs> It really uh, is. It's a fucking white cult. Uh, that's what I was having a conversation earlier. And I said, I just want you to try to find heterosexual black males outside doing anything. And I said, it's very specific. And she's like, I, 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 I can't. Like, yeah, because it's not about us. 
Right. If I cared about the Black Lives Matter, I would be so frustrated how an issue that's a real issue has been a Trojan horse for LGBTQ shit, for anarchy, for whatever the fuck. Right. So I have to like disconnect from that because I'll get worked up. Right. But like no one's really understanding that there's actually a history of racism in this country. Right. And it's just being used to get off other fuck shit agendas. Right. Right. So that's, that's what gets me yeah, riled that's crazy. up. Yeah. And I got heated into it with this guy on Twitter and I had to step away and go work out because <laughs> I was like, get off, Bridget. Yeah. I, if ever I find myself fighting with anyone on Twitter, I'm like, go work out. Like, okay. go, go yeah. sweat, do something. All right. And, it was a conversation where he he just days ago he made a really great point uh -huh. and he posted the way that protests were covered by the liberal media yeah. when conservatives were doing it and it yeah. was like a danger you're trying to kill grandma yeah. it was just one after another article and it uh -huh. was a great point that they were yeah. highlighting like not even two weeks ago you were saying that these people were protesting and that it was not valid essentially yeah. that they were risking people's lives and all this shit and now two weeks later they're like if you're not out you're, you're not you're, an you're ally. The bad guy yeah you're the bad guy but then he was saying i don't think that these i don't think any of these protests have he's like i can't support these protests which is fine you don't have to support yeah, the yeah, message yeah. yeah but he was saying i can't i don't think that there's any good because they all turn violent i'm like okay well that's not fair either hundreds of thousands of people have protested peacefully yeah well so that's the other conversation is why are they turning violent it's because antifa is out there being anarchists yeah no one wants to talk about antifa why? Why would you talk about Antifa? Because they do the dirty work of the left. Right. So it's like, well, there are, you know, I mean, like, there are there are mafia. I know. And so it's like we have to actually protect Antifa. And I'm like, oh, that's just very interesting. So you have people who are taking advantage of your cause and destroying property in your country, in your communities, in the communities that you care that you care about, and you won't even address them. Yeah. And I was like, we well, have to pay attention to what your individual motivations are at this point. Right. And it can't be about black males because they're not out there. They're not talking. It can't be about black heterosexual males because they're, they're the last people that are even around this thing. Right. It seems like they're the the it, it just is so many. You know, I've seen some smart analysis and the problem with riots. And I went to a Black Lives Matter protest downtown yeah. and uh -huh. it was after I think it was years ago. Uh -huh. And. It was interesting because there were so many different competing messages. So you mm -hmm. have the guy who gets up and says, oh, this is anarchy, burn it all down. And the next guy who gets up and gives a speech with a bullhorn and says, no, let's peacefully protest. And yeah. that's the way. Yeah. And then I was saying this on Twitter. And then a guy came by and was like, save the trees, you know, <laughs> like downtown LA. <laughs> save the trees. So anytime there's something like this, you have every single individual who's there well, with their own. Well, I, I would say it's anytime or something like this. I say anytime this is a black issue. Mm. This doesn't happen in other issues. Could you imagine a world where women are protesting for what they feel that they deserve and black or any kind of male is the is the dominant voice? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Women will not allow it. Could you imagine gay protests where the prominent voice is a straight person? It wouldn't happen. Right. So it it is it's just a, it's that's why I'm like there's some really dark energy connected to the fact that you actually don't want black people to speak for their own causes. It's very it's insulting actually. Right. We don't want to address that because you know, white people, we, we want to come together right now. And this is our form of coming together. But don't you think there are a lot of black males speaking on behalf of the cause right now? Let's go find the black males who are not in entertainment and are straight. And let's see what they're talking about. They're not even around. I'm not saying that they're away from it, but I'm saying they're not even around mm -hmm. because how about this? And I, this is the conversation I had earlier. Whatever's happening in 2020 to black people, they asked for it in 1960. And it's gotten to the point where we have to realize that maybe these solutions need to be personal and right. they don't need to be legislated because the condition we're in or because we were upset at what we what was going on and we called for it. So it's like 
that that ominous bill that Clinton passed, that the three strikes law, mm-hmm. that came from the Black Caucus. Because mm-hmm. the Black Caucus was like, hey, dude, our community is telling us that we're tired of these black people acting crazy. Mm-hmm. You put a bunch of black people in jail, we have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, in the 60s, people said we wanted, you know, equal housing. It's like, all right, well, we gave you housing, but we stacked you all up, stupid, you know, 60 stories, a bunch of poor people, and now you have gangs and you have that kind of fallout. Right. So it's like, the solution has to be personal. Mm-hmm. But a lot of what's going on in 2020 is because we're acting, we're asking for solution for broad legislative solutions, and then we actually kind of created some of the issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not to mention the culture of hip hop. Mm-hmm. What's you asked me what I was doing. Um, something happened where right when covid hit everything in entertainment kind of shut down right. i still got some pod- some podcast stuff going on with comedy central but right at that time uh, i have a music therapy program at this place for these kids that i work at basically these are young gangsters who are given a therapeutic approach instead of a criminal justice approach mm-hmm. and then we started a, a music therapy program where we connect their cultural issues to their core issues and try to help them work through that. Right. And like on Thursday, we're going to talk about culture. Well, that's forced me to look at the culture of hip hop and what's been promoted. And it's been a very anti-police culture promoted to the black community since NWA. Mm -hmm. And I think NWA might have had a point. But it's gotten to the place where it's like you're teaching young people to be very aggressive towards police officers. Right. And it's like, you have to take accountability into that. Yeah. It's not, you're not, you're not chilling. You're acting crazy when cops come because you think they're the enemy. Right. And it's like, well, what do you, what do you think that looks like? So like, I know your listeners know what I look like. I got Bridget by maybe 170 pounds. <laughs> if I decided right now to put you in my car, I don't know if I can do it. If you, if you said no in your mind and in your soul, I don't know if I can do it without hurting you. Right. I don't know. Ian, I got you by so many. Either way, if you filmed it, it would be ugly. Right. So what do you do if you teach people that the that the police are the enemy and when they come up to you, you're like, why are you, why are you harassing me? And you have this agitation and then they have to use force. There is no example of force being used appropriately. It looks so ugly. Right, right, right. We were having this conversation even about the protests and uh-huh. putting down the riots. And it's like, we live in a free society. There's no way to put down these riots that's going to look pretty. It can't. You know, so people, people are going to be killed. Yeah. I mean, people have already been killed, but at some point we're just going to have to shoot people. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you, I mean, I don't even know what you're doing. Like, I don't get it. How do you think you're helping black people by standing in front of some building? Like, I don't understand that. Have you seen a lot of the footage of the looting going on in Absolutely, LA? yeah. And it is... It seems from my perspective, what I watched was like three white dudes mm-hmm. come up with their all dressed in black, yep. breaking glass, yep. and then it's filled, and then it's just black people looting. Don't, don't ape shit. Organize though. I it it seems if, like if 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 I was gonna make a guess, it's like graffiti, right? If you go into a nice place, there's no graffiti. You don't want a graffiti. When right. You see some graffiti. You're like, oh, let me add my graffiti. If you're into doing graffiti, right? So it's and it's also. I don't know if there's people caught paying um, black people to tear shit up. Yeah. There's there's cars driving by giving black people bricks. I know. I saw and, that. And I'm just like, this is this is so sad. You blacks are being manipulated. Yeah. And, and it's 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 gross. And there is no outrage to that. You actually have something to fight for black people and you're still stuck on Trump. Yeah. And it's it seems they're stuck on Trump, but it seems like. I don't even know how many of the people who are looting would be. It seems very opportunistic. So I don't know that if you arrested them, they had one guy in Fox 11. He's like, yeah, George Floyd, I guess. But really, I just wanted some money. Yeah. And I think that's the the case. So let's look at the stats of the people who are getting arrested looting. They said in Minnesota at the end of the first night, they said over 95 percent were out of state. Yeah, I think they walked that back though. They walked it back a little bit, but yeah. but also Long Beach just had an issue in Lakewood when things got robbed. It was way out of state people. Yep. So yeah. So yeah, some like, guy was saying he was from Indiana. Yeah. Who, so that's organized opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, if you're protesting, don't you feel responsible for the community you're protesting for? Yeah. And like, what are you doing about that? Yeah. Like you could actually would do more good by staying home. Yeah. At this point, you would do more good at staying home. Interesting. 
just because it's providing so much cover. Exactly. Like yeah. you have to be responsible for that. Yeah. We, we, we've lived in a society like that our whole lives. Yeah. If I put on a concert and somebody gets raped, it's my fault. I should have had security. That's how we move. So right. if this is your, if this is your protest and things are being destroyed, you don't feel culpable in that. I mean, there's so much, I, there's so much justification for it in the mainstream media. It's the worst I have ever seen. It's crazy because I don't see how this does anyone a serve. I, I got the other second fight I got into with somebody. <laughs> I was fighting, and it's from both sides. Yeah. So I'm fighting this guy on the right who's like, you know, no, these protests have no value. Well, I, I think they do have a value, and okay. it, it doesn't even matter. They should still be allowed to do it. I agree. And then on the, <laughs> on the other hand, this guy is like, Fox 11 is only caring about the destruction of property. I'm like, no one cares about it. And mm. most of the destruction of the property is from small business owners who yep. are predominantly minorities. Yep. And in their own communities, they're out there with freaking guns trying to guard their shit. This shit's getting crazy. And nobody cares in the mainstream media. You don't hear those stories. It it's it's beyond that. What you do here is Christy Teigen and Joe Biden's camp saying that we're going to bail you out if you get locked up. I'm like, that's treason to me. Like, yeah. like because of that, I was like, oh, Chris, I, like, I personally canceled Christy Teigen after that. I said, you're whack and, and John Legend is whack too. I'm like, how you fuck this bitch? She say that. That doesn't make any sense to me. They were whack when they redid Santa Baby. Or oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was like, yo, that's crazy. You're okay with this? I said, like, that's interesting. That's Be interesting. And I, I'm not sure that when I was saying like, oh, the riots aren't great, then somehow you're racist. Listen, man, uh, all white listeners, don't allow yourself to be emotionally blackmailed. It's what, that's what's happening. And it's to the point where it's like, you got to realize that you're dealing with terrorists. You're dealing with godless people with a dark blackness in their soul and are trying to consume it's a reason why like if you build an entire culture around consumption and then COVID hits and you don't let them consume anymore well that's how kind of this shit happens right so it's like you don't negotiate with terrorists because how can you because what do they want right what do they want i'm arrested he's arrested what do they want right what do they want the, the, the whole entire white community is out tenfold marching for black people are you happy you're still not happy i don't even know anyone who's I haven't even seen anyone who's against this. No. You, you got to think like like what happened in, in Charlottesville, North Carolina. There was a Confederate flag, a, a statue. People came out and the Confederates came out. Where's the anti-protest? Have you ever seen a protest without an anti-protest? Yeah. There's no anti-protest right now. I think there was some I saw earlier, but I don't know. I can't trust any video. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's all taken out of context. Yeah. So it's it just seems like I've pretty much put a moratorium on sharing any video unless okay. I have the time to like go research yeah, 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 all of the context around the video. I hear you. There was a weird video that was going around this morning speaking of like emotional manipulating white people. And it was all these white people who were like, bow, you know, on their knees begging for forgiveness from um, a bunch of black people. <laughs> and na then I saw two conservative female black female friends of mine on Twitter kind of going back and forth about yeah. it because uh, Kira Davis was okay. like, no, this is cringy. <laughs> 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 you know, she's like, no. Yeah. And then someone else was like, well, we don't know the context. I, if you see the whole video, it was a congregation and then the black people asked for forgiveness and then it was a whole thing. And so maybe it was like... It still sounds awful. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I don't understand, like, slavery... I, Here's this is I don't know if I've told you this story, but I just had this conversation. I'm the I'm defining my voice, and I happen to have a, a, a aunt. She's about seventy two years old. She grew up in Louisiana. She grew up in Jim Crow South, and I wanted to get her take on Trump and things of that nature. Mm. And she said, and to let you know what her lifestyle was like, she said when she was a little girl, she wanted a dress. Her dad, the dress was six dollars. The dad said, you need to go and pick cotton so that you can afford the dress. She went, she picked cotton, and for lunch, she had to eat lunch or dinner on plates that were not cleaned after the white people. Mm -hmm. And so she had to eat dirty plates from white people. Yeah. And I don't know how much that was slavery, or I don't know how much that was racism or just running water issue, but that's what happened, and she, 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 she bought the dress. So that's her society. And she said, at that time, her father was respected. 
He car- he kept a shotgun at the door, even pulled the shotgun on the white man and would be supported because if he was wrong, he was wrong. If he was right, he was right. And she has none of the anger that the black community or the supporters of the black community have today. And she had to deal with a level of oppression that would destroy anybody walking around <laughs> right now. We're not built like that. Right. Like I couldn't imagine picking cotton in Louisiana. And it's not just her. It's all of them. It's all of my family members. They can't connect to what's going on right now because they're more focused on the progress as opposed to whatever bad is happening. That was this great civil rights lawyer who Fox was interviewing. He's Uh in Santa Monica and he was like, I don't know if I've done anything right. I've been fighting for civil rights for 25 years and he sees it as progress. You know, he's Uh like, we've made a lot of progress, but I feel like, what have I done if nobody feels that way? Yeah, it's not progress is determined after you look at something. If you went on a diet today, you don't know if there's progress until you check the situation a month later. Mm-hmm. So I work in a in an all boys youth facility. I'm gonna tell you right now, we need black men in the homes. We all agree with that. Mm-hmm. The single parent homes in 1950 were in the black community were like less than 25. I know it's crazy. Today they're over 70. Yeah. Who's responsible for that? Like like whose fault is that? Mm-hmm. How is the black community getting worse? further away from slavery further away from the 1968 right so it's like well there's something going on right who is who do you think is responsible it's these policies yeah you cannot you cannot you cannot legislate a lot of people at the same time yeah you cannot tell a bunch of people what to do that doesn't make any sense at all yep. i cannot say all women need to do this all black people need to do this you need to allow people the freedom to provide for themselves yeah and we need to stop begging for solutions to come in because every solution that the black community has begged for has done more damage in the long run than it has and you know that we thought would fix whether it would be you know asking for police to come in and lock her kids up and give them the three strikes law or if it's asking for you know house when, when i grew up my mother, she would remind me, she said, if anyone ever comes into this house and asks why there's male clothes in my in my closet, make sure you tell them that it's yours. That's because she was receiving welfare. Right. And the welfare stipulation was no men in the home. Yeah. So it's like we, but that makes sense when you write the bill up, right? Right. Oh, we're man, but no, you actually incentivize um, single parents. <laughs> I saw this when I was in rehab in Minneapolis. Yeah. So I have a, I, I was the only white girl in my rehab and it was one woman Val had been in and out probably she had nine kids whoa and she had been in and out of rehab probably 11 times wow and there were women who were pregnant on you know on on crack and like all of it was just it seemed like a system that Mm -hmm. I was like this seems like a bad we're incentivizing a bad thing right here You, you, you definitely are incentivizing if let, let's take my mother for instance. By the way, she was on Section Eight. She paid seventeen dollars for rent. Mm-hmm. What more would you want? Like, <laughs> like, like that's your reparations. Like, what? I don't understand. She paid seventeen dollars for rent. Uh, but what it did is it never forced her to be in a relationship and make the compromises necessary for a relationship. Mm-hmm. Why would you ever make? Because you're getting married. You're gonna be some shit that you that you used to do that you might have to let go of and some shit that you have to accept. Mm-hmm. And Hopefully you're where you need to be and you can work through that. But if you're a, if you're a woman and you know that the court system is going to give you your kids and you know that the government's going to give you the money to take care of your kids, you start looking at men as less than you and men is inexchangeable. Right. You see no value of the man because the government ends up being your man. And the men feel no responsibility. And they keep fucking and moving. Because the <laughs> government will take care. They take care. Of of the, that's their it. Their whatever. Yeah. That's how you know it's not a Black Lives Matter uh, protest because they would be burning down the child support buildings. They would not be burning down this other shit. If the shit that niggas care about about is like nba 2k and child support and and fantasy football like we don't care about (laughs) this other shit we're not we're not looting rei like that's (laughs) those are not black issues (laughs) yeah that was that was something that was funny when they were looting rei i was like that's like like the whitest camping store they don't even have our sizes (laughs) like you gotta get out of here we don't even do that stuff so that's how you know what's kind of going on and i and i think anyone who's just responding emotionally i I don't know if they've done any research because if you start doing research you you find yourself being quiet because you don't know who you're talking to or what you're talking about yeah so 
what frustrates you in terms of talking about racism and coming from the place where you come from? Uh, a frustration that I had to deal with, and I had the processes last night, therefore I'm no longer frustrated. It was, we're teaching white people today, we're teaching white people to feel sorry for us, which that doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, no. It doesn't, like I don't want pity or sympathy because I believe that I'm capable of achieving anything that I set my mind out mm. to. So the idea that white people are my barrier more than I am my own barrier mm. is very confusing to me. Mm -hmm. And if there's any frustration, it's on that because it's like people going, well, I have white privilege and I'm so sorry for it. I'm like, God damn, that's, that's insulting. It's so insulting. <laughs> I've never been able to get by. It's always I been unsettling it. to me because it feels still like othering. It That's still weird. feels like a, um, whenever I see people be, I, you know, forcing me to address my privilege. Yeah. And there was a little girl on next door who posted, I swear it's a parody account. It can't even be real. Or <laughs> okay. she just like read her first critical theory book. Uh -huh. But she wrote this whole thing demanding that the entire neighborhood accept their white privilege. And I was like, you don't even know who's, who's in, in the neighborhood. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, like, what does that make sense? Like, the suicide among white men is something I would never trade for. No. The swaggerlessness among white men <laughs> is something that I would never trade for. So, I like, I understand, like, okay, being alive is about the the conservation of resources. And, and I think white people, they got a head start. They made some rules in their favor and that's what we're dealing with. Right. That just happened to be it. Right. It doesn't mean that the white person that you see in your face agrees with that or even was a part of that. And I just accept that because I'm an adult. Yeah. But when it comes to things that matter to Coach T, I don't know if race is the issue. Right. Culture communication is the issue. I find that when I know how to connect with people, I become more successful. When I stay culturally whatever, it's fine. Right. It's I got into it with uh Ice T of all people on Twitter. Yeah, fuck this guy. Because he was he was like blasting like every he's like the blah blah blah. And then it was during Beverly Hills. He's like, they're in Beverly Hills. And I said, you're tweeting this from your compound. Yeah. I'm like, they're coming for you because this yeah. is a class war. And they were all screaming, yeah. eat the rich. I'm yeah. like, these what are the hell white are you talking about? Bernie bros who are pissed off that yeah. their leader didn't get it. So so that's another conversation that we and can And he bring goes, up. bitch, yeah. they're coming for you. Put me on blast. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, they can have my $5. Yeah, they don't want my only shit. Only one of us is worth $40 million here yeah. and it's not me. He's been on SVU since I was in junior high. Yeah. But uh, but uh <laughs> yeah, I don't think I I don't think people are 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 wrapping their minds around like like that eat the rich. So that's a whole nother issue that's happening yeah, right now. That's crazy. And and this is fueled by AOC, right? AOC, and this is fueled by Bernie. Bernie. And I don't know how to interpret that as anything other than greed. Yeah. When you see someone successful, you want it, you don't know how to do it, so you blame them for their success. Yeah. When I see someone some successful, I humble myself, figure out how they got there, and figure out what what I need to learn from that process. Yeah. Greed is at an all-time high in this country. It and seems like entitlement, too. Entitlement. Just Absolutely. Just all across the board, we yeah, have an be entitlement. Mine. Should be mine. It's funny, even like the homeless in LA are some of the most, enti I'm like, <laughs> you Absolutely. have some en entitled motherfuckers in yeah, this town. Yeah, it's acting fucking crazy. I was one time walking and some guy just, he like put his hand out and he's like, hey, I'm homeless. I'm like, oh, what do I <laughs> owe you a fucking dollar? <laughs> yeah, you should work on that. What do you mean you're homeless? <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense to me. That's a crazy. Have you seen in Brentwood all the homeless tents along uh -uh. veteran with the American flags? It's uh -uh. wild. I think they gave them tents for COVID. Oh, really? I don't know if they all came with an American flag, but it's. It's a really surreal, weird. That's that's it's that's fucking nuts. bizarre. If you go down like San Vicente across, like you know, the back end of Veteran Park, yeah. the people who were willing to kind of give up the drugs and everything are inside, but outside there's a whole line, all these super nice tents with American flags on them. Yeah, for veterans, I it's it's a weird, I it's lose. a weird just juxtaposition. That's that's weird. Um, yeah. There's and there's that's the thing too. There's so much in California in particular, where I feel like we're seeing these really violent 
riots, protests, mm-hmm. all of these things that are deteriorating anarchy in many of the states where the wealth inequality is the worst. So California has mm. some of the worst wealth inequality in, in yeah. the country yeah. because they've basically made it impossible for the middle class to even get ahead or or make you it's impossible for small business owners they tax the hell out of everybody lots of taxes and then but these are democratic policies Thank that you. basically make it so that there's a ruling class and a peasantry yeah and now you have the peasantry revolting <laughs> like <laughs> we've seen this before yeah I don't, I don't think people want to understand how we got here because we're we're very emotional right now right and I'm like, well, you whatever it is your anger is, you should try to get more information on the thing that you feel is making you angry. Yeah. I had to tell a lady today because they were like, well, you mentioned reparations. And I was like, hey, I just want you to know, like I'm reading this book by Thomas Wall that I'm just quoting him so that people don't think I'm crazy. But I already knew this before him. There was a higher percentage of blacks who owned slaves freed black who owned slaves in the south than there was of the freed whites who owned slaves not meaning that there was more slave owners that was white just percentage wise it was like 40 percent versus like three percent mm-hmm. so i'm like so these reparations that we're asking for and that's why you hear about the black people fighting for the confederate states and the civil rights so these reparations that we're asking for you know that some black families would have to pay other black families for slavery mm-hmm. all i'm saying is if as long as you try to make it a black and white issue, you're going to miss the nuance. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on. And if you really are worked up, you're going to have to sit down and get yourself educated and allow people around you to be ignorant. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't seem, I mean, I was watching even like Don Lemon, who I'm like, wow, that, you I, are. That guy's got to gr- go. He is a great A piece of shit, that guy's one. Go. He's homosexual, right? I don't know. I think so, because he's got an issue with. Uh, uh, oh, I think he is actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, I said- I look, don't have an issue with that. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because you have to look at the stuff that's crazy is coming from light-skinned people, the LGBTQ. It's coming from really leftist stuff. And I'm like, well, these people, without being disrespectful at all, tend to have some sort of a identity issue and mm. they struggle with connecting. Mm. And so when you struggle with connecting, this is sometimes how it plays out. And it's like, well, of course, if you were, you know, you spent 10 years, you know, fucking guys and then 10 years fucking girls and you go back, uh, listen, you can do what you want to do. There's no hate there, but you definitely are, tr- you're definitely struggling. And uh, and a lot of times these light-skinned guys from biracial couples, they're like, mm. well, my mom's black and, and my dad's white and you don't really know. So it's that's why I was like, there's no niggas in these protests because niggas know who they are like, like we're good <laughs> this is we, we don't have an identity issue we're good like we like basketball barbecue martin and we're good it's just some people are like do i like martin but then i also like crochet is like bro you're struggling and you need to deal with that <laughs> that's that's really interesting that's like really a fascinating observation and i would have no concept of, or even how to unpack it Let, let's <laughs> Go on your Twitter feed, look at the people who are protesting, and then try to guess how many of those people have a subscription to an antidepressant. Yeah, it just seems like there's so, it just doesn't seem like there's any way to categorize any of it because there's so many people. But if, so it's if, so many individuals. There's so many. So yeah. It, but if there is a, there's an inability to connect. Yeah. And when you, and when you haven't figured out how to connect, this is kind of what it looks like. I think a lot of the leftist policies are people that just haven't figured out how to connect. They're also a, a little bit of arrogance in there because they don't think it's they they don't think they're the reason why they didn't connect. They think the world's the reason why I didn't connect. And right. it's this and it's this and it's this and it's this, but it's like you just want to be connected. You just want that's why there's so much fucking hugging going on. There seems to be a lot of I mean I see guys like who do I follow? And I don't know what their their like sexual orientation is or whatever, but they there does seem to be like a lot of guys in entertainment. Yeah. Franklin Leonard is one who I see a lot. Uh Matthew Cherry. They're all in entertainment. Mm-hmm. I think Franklin Leonard does a blacklist and you know, they're very kind of pro message behind this movement. Yeah. Which is Listen, there's no, I don't know any, but I don't know any heterosexual males who this matters that much to them. Interesting. It is, it's been co-opted. Now, I know some heterosexual black males who are like, 
I got my issues with the police. It is what it is. Right. And there's none of them who think that this is a resolution for that. Most black men just realize you got to have your paperwork in order and you won't have no police issues. So what do you think about all the looters? The looters is anarchy. Yeah. It's but the, it's, I mean, I watched like seven hours of it the other day and it but seems it, to be young black men oh, uh, in mass. Yeah. So it's, it's, it starts with someone breaking something. Right. And then once the thing is broken, then you're going in. Right. I get that. Right. And it, but by the way, let's just call them people taking advantage of the opportunity. No, sometimes they're, they're black. Sometimes they're black. Sometimes they're yeah, white. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think. I don't get a vibe that people are going to these places. I don't get a vibe that a majority of the people are going to these places saying we're going to destroy property. I think people are leaving their house because they saw something that was traumatizing and this is how they deal with that. And that's right. good and that's fine. But there's some people who are like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I know there's a hundred people over there and I want some, some urban outfitters. Right. And so they're like, well, how do we get in there? Let's break this shit. And then people are like, people are stealing over here. I guess we're rioting. Like, yeah. like if you've ever been in a building and you, and you saw a fight. Like me and my wife went to a Lil Wayne concert one time and one fight broke out. Yep. Then another. Yeah. Then another and then another and then another. So I'm like, these Antifa guys know what they're doing. Yeah. They've done studies. You literally lose your mind in a mob. Hell yeah. You lose the ability to basically think Hell for yeah. yourself. Which is why that, you should not be out there. In that book <laughs> <laughs> in that book that is really famous, um, John Ronson, I talk about it all the time, the So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Uh -huh. But he talks about a lot of these studies they've done about mob mentality and how people it's basically it's a herd mentality. Yeah. And I, we were at even like, actually we were at the devil makes three, which is a bluegrass band. I've been going to see them for years. Uh -huh. And then there was just this kind of violent energy in the air lately. And this was two years ago. I went wow. and saw them and people were moshing at a blue. It's like, Interesting. and getting violent. It was right. I think it was like 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was surprised at how, but then, you know, it was what I noticed was I got bumped a couple of times from behind and yeah. I was about to start throwing out. Absolutely. Because that's that's how it that's was like, how that's how human energy yeah. happens. And so that's why I'm like, like, I'm like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Like, I, mean, like, like, I don't I don't know any like black people who are sitting around like this is my opportunity to get some shit. But I can also fab in some people are like, oh, there are people protesting. Oh shit, something's open. I have to take advantage they of it. They seem that. young. Like yeah. these kids, they look like kids. Yeah, I these are these are kids. And so I'm like, well, that's what's going on. And and that's a whole nother conversation. They yeah. would do that if it was women marching. They would do that if it was Asian marching. These are just opportunists. I don't know. This is a lot of conversations. But at the end of the day, it's just it's just godlessness. Yeah. <laughs> and when there's godlessness, this is kind of what it looks like. I just wonder how, you know, I feel, I see, I, I was saying to somebody yesterday, watching all this unfold, and then now they're starting to really make these arrests, and yeah. because they're coming in caravans with cars, and then they're just arresting, and yeah. it's all trace contacting, because they're idiots, yeah. and taking selfies, and there's just this, like, overall sense of bravado and shamelessness to the whole, yeah. um, all of the looting in particular, it's like yeah. a badge of pride or coolness yeah, I, and i don't get it but i'm like this is just gonna end up with a lot more young black dudes in jail it seems like there's there this is not about black people yeah it can't be yeah. it cannot be but it, that's why i get mad when i see the media running cover for the looting i'm like you know who's gonna suffer for this right yeah, this is this is not this is not this is not a black movement because mm -hmm. what I mean by that is this is not a bunch of black people who are upset. Black Lives Matter is started by black lesbians. Like this is this, <laughs> like this is these are facts. This is the black lesbian matters. Like this is not like and I and I, I who did start it? I, I don't three even, black lesbians. When? Uh, I guess I don't even know the history of it. Era, hands up. Don't shoot. Right. Oh, OK. So that's uh, which is a lie. And so that's the Ferguson, the Ferguson. Right. Right. That's when it started popping. Right. Right. The real one that. that and didn't, then there was D-Ray or whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah. D-Ray. So homosexual. Okay. Now, it, and I'm not judging. I'm just saying, because <laughs> what ends up happening is there always tends to be an agenda where it's mm. like, let's use the black cause to get our cause out. Mm. because that's why these movements transfer so fast mm. that's why it goes from black lives matter to now we got to love everybody rainbow and this and and you know now it's trans lives matter signs and things like mm -hmm. that could you imagine if the women were protesting and i put up a sign for my cause it would be like 
bro, get out of here. Right. Because that's how those women feel that's their movement. Mm-hmm. This is not about how black people feel and it's their movement because not because the black people don't feel the same about this issue. Mm. We all feel differently. You can't put us together no, on this one. No, it's not a monolith. That's yeah, the thing. yeah, we can't. And if something happens that we all feel the same about, like 92, I was having a conversation with two guys who rioted during 92, and they were like, yeah, fuck that. White people weren't allowed to go down there. That's why Reginald Denny got his ass whooped, because they were like, we feel upset, and that's how we feel, and this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. That's not happening today. Mm-hmm. This is This is people using that, using what's happened in 92, using what's happened in Detroit, to get their causes off some of the causes anarchy some of the causes uh bernie bros some Mm -hmm. of the causes you know gender equality Mm -hmm. whatever but it ain't their cause and so what's going on is self-service at the at the (laughs) self-service at at the at the expense of a dead black guy which is the sickest shit that should ever that's disgusting yeah that's why it's been really upsetting to see and then just seeing the I hate how many times they play that video on the news. It's crazy. I'm like, please stop. I it, can't. I can't see this it anymore. Was, it was so perfect that I, 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 I don't even know. I mean, no disrespect. I don't even know if that guy is dead. You have COVID. <laughs> you have this. Like, I no. Was, it feels like we're in a simulation. It, that felt very interesting. I was like, yeah, nothing gets lucky like that. It's crazy. Like that was crazy. You have a population that's been locked up. I said this. I was like. Yeah. All the worst thing, I said this one like a month ago, Mm -hmm. I was on a walk and I'm like, the worst thing that could happen right now is like a police killing. Yeah. And, and it was like, it was like the Ahmaud Arbery. Yeah. Yeah. Like like, like that sketchy, but the details come out and we saw that as the details were released, less cause for the anger. We're still upset. We don't like police brutality, but it is what it is. But then well, that wasn't even police. That was just vigilante. Thank you. Right. Text. And we and, and we tried to make it fit the narrative, but it didn't fit well enough. But now this comes out and it fits the narrative perfectly. Yeah, it's un- unsettling. It, it's like how? Like I, I, know. like I like I'm not done researching that. Like I don't really care. So I don't whatever. But I'm like something happened there. Like that. It's the timing weird that of that. Knew each other too. The timing of that. It's weird. It's weird. It doesn't make any sense to me. And now even just seeing like the, you know, I feel like since Trump got elected, it's Uh been this escalation between the two because the the left has been, I said this when he was elected, I'm like, my biggest fear is that the left is going to base, it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh They cannot handle him not being a dictator. And so Mm. they're going to keep pushing the pushing this and pushing this and pushing yeah. this until they basically dare him into being a dictator. Yeah, they have to. Like, it, yeah. it keeps escalating. Yeah. And yesterday they were like, and now, and now you see what we've been saying all along. I'm like, you're burning churches yeah. down outside the White House. Go. Anybody who has sense is on point. As a matter of fact, there's enough people who want to live in a country where this bullshit is b- wrong as opposed to the people who think this is okay. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Listen, man, there's a judgment coming and you need to make sure that you're aligned. But that is what that is. But it's like, it's the craziest thing in the world. So here I watch Atlanta. Killer Mike comes out. uh, T.I. comes out. The mayor is a black woman. The police chiefs is a black man. They said, please don't do this to our community. And what happens? It turns up. That would never happen if that was their movement. If Lady Gaga said everybody wear pink tomorrow, all the Gaga fans wear pink Mm -hmm. because they support Gaga. Mm -hmm. If you supported black people, you would have listened to Killer Mike. Mm -hmm. You don't support black people. You support your own cause. And it feels good to be connected because you've been disconnected for COVID. And that's why you're not at work today. And that's why you're taking care of business. Yeah. But don't lie to yourself and say it's about a guy in Minnesota who got killed. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then there's all and then it's I I get upset, too, because I see. You know, so many, I guess, as you would say, emotionally manipulated white people, but their their heart is in the right place. They're, I, how about this? I don't want to say emotionally manipulated. Something happened and it's absolutely OK to feel sorry for that situation. Yeah. But what's happening is people are like, well, if you're silent, you're a part of the issue. Like, since when? Like, do you know how many things? Here's Bridget. That wasn't the worst thing that happened that day in America. <laughs> yeah. 
probably in that state some little girl got fucked by her dad yeah somebody got burnt alive yeah like some weird shit happened someone got tortured so it's like we like no that's you're okay to feel a type of way about that but then someone comes along and says if you don't feel anything then you're a part of the problem so now you have people who are not a part of the problem feeling like they are a part of the problem yeah and i'm like ah that's disgusting and it, yeah. and, and i'm like if i gotta be a black guy to say hey look dude if you're racist check it if you're not racist, be comfortable in not being racist. Like, yeah. don't let your white, Gilt. mentally well adjust, uh, mentally unadjusted people guilt you into feeling bad. It's weird. It's it's definitely something I've seen. It's almost like a a mind virus. Like it's it's spread and it's a cult. Yeah, and they don't end well. There is no cult that has ever ended well. And then it's funny too because then I'll see people trying to do the right thing uh -huh. and or getting behind a movement. And then they'll be like, you're making this movement all about you. <laughs> That's what they're doing. There's no, and they can't help themselves. There's just, it, do, it doesn't seem like there's, there's nothing that I could do that would be enough. I, thought, I could be I, quiet. I, I told I could, Moses, I, Moses was like, Moses said, Hey, he texted me cause he was bugging out a couple of days ago. He said, yo, why don't, how come no one's talking about hiring more black people? as police officers how come they're not what talking about hiring more black people as yeah, police yeah. officers i said that's not the solution and he said well what is the solution and i said god nigga <laughs> he's all like what we're supposed to just be act, keep acting like this i said i said moses if george floyd came back from the dead and said stop doing this they would not stop yeah that is self-service this is an mm. opportunity for people to serve themselves wow and it's a very selfish society it's just so obvious. No, no, how about this? The selfish people are the ones that are losing their mind. I drove by a bunch of family members who were taking care of business today. Yeah. We're, I was at work yesterday. I'm going back tomorrow. We're all taking care of business because we believe in causes greater than ourselves. Yeah. These people don't have that connection. And they're- and But they're, this is their cause. Exactly. Yeah. And so it just, it makes sense. Like, oh, I get to be connected to this cause because everyone's connected and now I get to have this, whatever. And I'm like, no, no, you're not, you're not connected to the cause. You're connected to your cause. Well, and it's a, you kind of have to believe that, that all cops are bad and that yeah. this is a, there's just a systemic, inherently systemic racist society. Like yeah. so, so there's so much the overlap you're seeing with the eat the rich is that there's <laughs> been this idea that capitalism is a white supremacy. It's basically yeah. white supremacy, and it's held up. C capitalism has has been the Negro's greatest friend. <laughs> I mean that's that's not even that's not like that's not even like an argument. Yeah, like the fact that we're able, the fact that the black person has an opportunity to equip himself with a, a set of skills to make him a desirable as a, as an employee you have to like capitalism because that's how you fight racism yeah if not then you're coming up with reasons as to why you're picking people and employing people yeah now it's like if you're you know mark zuckerberg and you think facebook is an idea you get to do that idea and if you want coders and the coders happen to be black then you get to whatever if we don't do that then the government makes facebook and then they get to pick and if they pick the black ones then that's racist to the white ones if they pick the whatever yeah. so it's like freedom actually has done more to help uh, race relations than than these Democrat, then the lack of freedom. Yeah, because it is impossible to say, I got, I got a solution for all the women in the world. I got a solution for all the Asian people in the yeah. world. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, what scares me about what's happening is that everyone's being put in a monolith. So yes. white women, shut up, come get yours. You know, <laughs> like I hear that all the time, which is fine. Yeah. You know, but I just try and imagine the way that the rhetoric around white people, if you. You could not talk about any other person the way you talk about there, white people. There's so much white bullying happening. <laughs> it, like it's gross. It's gross. It's gross because I'm a coach and and I like winning and I don't want to win that way. Yeah. And so that's a little disgusting to me. But some people they're not like that. And it it just I felt like a week ago we were all upset at a Central Park Karen, and now we're all okay with the Karens next to us protesting. And I was like, that's not real. Like like yeah. the protest is not real because. I mean, it's a real protest, but I'm like, it ain't, it ain't coming from, 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 from a thing that's real. Like, could you imagine 1992 
the police being able to kneel with those black people that were rioting. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Now I got like I got cops that are kneeling and preaching and hugging. I'm just like, that shit not real. Well, not, and then like hours later, they'll be shooting rubber bullets. Yeah, they I'm have like, to. Because you have to do your yeah. job. But I'm like, come on, that's that's not that's not a lot of people feeling the same way. This is a lot of people feeling their way and kind of moving closer to I get to feel my way next to you and it feels like connection, but it's it's really not. So do you, how are the guys you're working with doing? Kids or the adults? The both. Okay. So the adults I work with, uh, the, where I work at is primarily black. They're like, they're the ones who, they're the ones who gave me the perspective that I have today about how not real this was compared to 92. Because in 92, they were like, I was out there. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I was fucking everything up because mm -hmm. we had had enough. And it was like, they don't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so the same people that were protesting in 92 are chilling. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Yeah, that's interesting. If it's supposed to be about police brutality, those motherfuckers could have came out again. So the same people that were protesting in 92 were like, I don't even want to be out there with this because this doesn't sound like like it's aligned with me. Yeah. The kids are fucking criminals and they only care about themselves and they always do. And that's why we have that facility. Yeah. So one of the things that was brought was like the white administrator who was drunk off her white guilt tears. She's like, can you use your music program to make a song that kind of unites us together? And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, I got to drink your white guilt tears here, too. Like, I was like, that would work. But these motherfuckers are the problem. Yeah. These people run into motherfuckers houses. When white people are afraid of black people, it's because of young men in my facility. Yeah. It's not because of me. It's because they do all kind of weird shit. Well, that's why I was saying this is like it's so bad just from an optics perspective yeah i'm like you guys i've watched seven hours of black men looting stores <laughs> you know like that is not a good that's just bad optics Brutal. if you're if you care about your own movement if yeah. you're a black man who cares about your movement you would think you yeah. would be like let's not live up to the stereotypes boys yeah well there's there's a lot i've seen a guy in long beach chase out an antifa guy yeah and i was like oh wait way to go but i'm like there, there's like seven to 12 different things happening yeah. you can't even we're not having a conversation no we're having conversations yeah and that's what someone was telling me today she's like what's the conversation that we need to have i said which one do you want to talk about you want to talk about anarchy you want to talk about police brutality what do you want to talk about there's so many different things and they're all um like on top of each it's like a pancake stack of yeah. conversations yeah and yeah. everybody's just gorging themselves on yeah. the pancakes and it all tastes like the same but it's all you different. have no idea and I, I i think it's pride month or something like that right yeah, yeah. and so i heard some of that community saying oh we feel like our, our shine's being taken away oh god, <laughs> and, god. So, and so i was like listen one thing that's not about it's not about black heterosexual males yeah black heterosexual males are the scapegoats for your fuckery yeah because it is and that's what bothers me too is that if, if that's how it feels when i'm seeing these riots i'm like these are the guys that are gonna get scapegoated for all this shit yeah and and there's also just a general lack of anyone who's kind of justifying this or giving them because mm -hmm. when they interview a lot of the people it's like critical theory or whatever they've been, whatever they've been kind of brainwashed with is like, well, this is just how it is, like capitalism and all, like this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. everybody seems to have an excuse mm. for their behavior. <laughs> That's so very it's well like, put. Oh, it's Trump. Oh, it's because That's very you know, well like, put. I'm owed by capitalism. Oh, because I've been oppressed. Like, I, look, when I got out of rehab and I had a fucked up situation with a family member who did something that could have very well put me in a position to be a victim for the rest of my life. And there you. were years where I felt like I was owed. Okay. And that my mom owed me and that society owed me and yeah. a lot of those feelings. And it, I had to work against that. Yeah. None of that serves me. Yeah. And it doesn't serve the greater community. And it doesn't really, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I'm still responsible for making my life today. Yeah. yeah. If you study scripture, there's an element of scripture where it's very, very clear that you need to work from a place of love and you need to practice forgiveness for your own sake. And who is practicing forgiveness today? No one. Who is on the street? That's why I keep saying it's godlessness. Yeah. Because what you're seeing is people that have no connection to any type of direction. That That's why every direction feels right. And it feels, it feels self-satisfying. 
Like I won't let myself be mad for slavery because I I follow the most high. I have to practice forgiveness and I'll know what I need to do when I need to do it. But because I am forgiven, like you just said, you be you get to be free. Yeah. Like you get to be like, all right. Whew. And that, you know, that's the conflicting millions of conflicting feelings is that I like I have struggle with this idea of white privilege. Yeah. Because this myth. <laughs> it 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 I don't know what it is because I know that there are certain things that I don't have to worry about because I I am white. Hey, certain things that I don't have to worry about cuz I'm black like running a 4540. So <laughs> <laughs> so I had a conversation yesterday about white privilege. Now, I don't want to I don't want to go Candace Owens and say it doesn't like I'm not trying to go there. Well, what I will say is this country was started by white males. Right. And those white males created a country to benefit them. Mm -hmm. But they created the country with the idea that everyone could ultimately benefit themselves. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that is real. But because they started it, they actually have a head start. And there is nothing that white people can do about the past today. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. But because of that, there is a bit, there's a, there, the growth that you receive through resistance you don't have which is why like the idea of me trading places with a white person is crazy to me yeah, yeah. because i would never want to like they're swaggerless they're uncomfortable they're corny they lack <laughs> aggression they're passive like yeah. it's just like i don't want to be that yeah. and, and it, uh, what we really want I don't want to say what we really want, but I'm saying what people are trying to say is like, we want the financial situation of the white person. But I was like, I don't want their financial situation if it, if I have to sacrifice my spiritual situation. Yeah. Like, I like my spiritual situation. It didn't go the way that I wanted it to go, you know, with flesh and opportunities. But because my spiritual situation is so strong, I get to create those opportunities for myself. Yeah. It's funny. I feel the same way about men. Uh-huh. Like, I see men and i'm like oh man what's it like to just like walk through life and not have to look over your shoulder because you're yeah. basically prey all the time and but on the other hand i wouldn't well no that's not true i would actually rather be a man <laughs> just <laughs> 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 but this is why i was joking and it's a horrible joke that i'll always get in trouble for but i'm like only an <laughs> insane man would want to be a woman if you ask any <laughs> yes, if you yes. ask any freaking man if he'd want yeah. to trade places with a woman 99 percent would be like hell no no never hell no I understand more women wanting to trade with men, but yeah. the other way, I'm like, why? You're crazy. You're crazy. Why would you yeah, want I don't, this? Yeah, I don't really, I don't understand that. But like, the lion has a role in the animal kingdom. Yeah. So does the fly. Yeah. So, so does the bear. So does the tiger. And it's like, if you're not satisfied with your role, then you're just envious. But your role is beautiful if you believe on a higher level, if you're only looking at your role, then you'll have birds upset that they can't swim and fish upset that they can't fly. Yeah. But I'm like, fish are beautiful and birds are beautiful. Women are beautiful in their role and men are beautiful in their role. So that's why when you have people trying to come out of their role, they become disoriented and they're out there protesting because <laughs> they don't know their role <laughs> and they haven't accepted it or they've experienced trauma. Yeah. That has made it hard to accept their role. Yeah. Or it's just, yeah, it's a dis disintegrated, you know, dis like they're maladapted essentially. It's like yeah. there was, I, I mean, it's taken me a long time to just try and figure out like process stuff, you know, yeah. you have to do work on yourself. Absolutely. It's, I have so many weird conflicting feelings all the time about all this stuff, like everything going on. And I feel like because there's not very much, space for nuance other than podcasts which is like thank oh, god yeah, for this yeah. but like online there's it's hard to be nuanced at all because even covid which i was still trying to get my mind around like yeah. i have narrative whiplash <laughs> you know i yeah. feel like i get i'm like wait just like a week ago you guys were shaming people in the ozarks for going to a fucking pool party i know and now so, if uh, you're not out protesting you're evil yeah so so at, at some point i think it's like if if you allow it you're going to realize that the media has an agenda and it's not the news like yeah th like when you watch i just watched all the terminators with my wife okay okay we we didn't think it was real we thought it was entertainment 
Right. That's what Don Lemon is. Yeah. He's just a terminator. Yeah. He's not re- he's not reporting the things. He's just making things that are kind of real. And so I can't take him seriously. Yeah. I can't take the politicians seriously. Cuomo Cuomo no. Cuomo tweeted something and I was like, Oh, Cuomo, let me read what his responses were. And them people from New York ate his ass. That's up. like Trump too. I can't take him seriously. <laughs> yeah. Quote some lady was like I will never vote Democratic again. And she said, I have no one to blame but myself because I voted for you. And I was like, oh, that anger is real because we caught you in bullshit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's that's beautiful. There's there's a lot more sanity happening than insanity. Yeah. I think. But insanity is always louder than sanity. It's true. I mean, the one crazy guy on the corner is a lot louder than the people who are just yeah. kind of walking by doing their work. Yeah. But it is, it's, um, I feel centered you know weirdly like i feel weirdly calm in the midst of all the chaos what are the nuances that you that so i feel that you're like when i what what i struggle with is i take in i try to take in all perspectives so i really try to understand this like i'll i'll read like you know brie newsom and from her perspective this is like a white supremacist society that basically needs to be torn down Oh. Now, I don't really know what that the end game is. I, I don't know if that's true. I don't even know if that's true. I don't think that's true. But I still try to see things from so many perspectives. So I think sometimes I'm my own worst enemy and disorient and feeling disoriented. Uh, so like, because there's a lot of anger. I don't under. There's so like, much so, rage. So if somebody said like this is a white supremacist society. I'm like, you can't just say that. You got to like, you got to defend that. Like, what do you mean I, by she that? She will defend it. I would love to talk. So here's here's what I will say, right? You don't get blacker than my story. I can go story for story with black. Mm-hmm. Crack, meth, d- d- jail. You don't get blacker than my story. But who I am today is large in part because of the structure that I had from white men. Mm-hmm. Uh, my football coach, Jeff Steinberg, he put inside of a structure that forced me to be less selfish. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it at the time, but it forced me to think about the greater good. I got a wrestling coach by the name of Paul Keesaw. Uh, I was going through some shit with my housing when I went to Moore Park and I was like, man, I don't know if I'll be able to stay here. He looked me in my face and said, dude, can fuck about that. If it don't work out, you can sleep on my fucking floor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't exist without those contributions between of those white men. Mm. So when someone says it's a white supremacist society, well, how do you account for Paul Keesaw? Mm. Makes no sense. Now it goes back and forth. I know fuck niggas who are black and I know fuck niggas who are white. Yeah. So why would you, why would you make it about race? Yeah. Like I literally am like who I am today is large in part of white men who have contributed to my life. Yeah. So like, I can't, I can't embrace the, the white supremacy. We're like, well, you have examples of your life, but Little Wayne, I don't know if you know about Little Wayne, but Little Wayne is not a pro Black Lives Matter guy. Little yeah. Wayne shot himself in the chest when he was like 11 years old. And when the police came in, they all trampled over his body and they said, where the drugs at and things like that. And then a cop said, you dumb motherfuckers, don't you see that there's a man right here with a hole in his chest? And he took him to the hospital and didn't just drop him off, stayed in the hospital with him and made sure that he was okay. Mm. And he was the only white cop there. Mm. The niggas that ran over Lil Wayne were blacker than a motherfucker. Mm. So I, so when I hear that, I'm like, well, you're lying and you don't know you're lying. Or you, you tried to do something that was broad to something that can't be broad. Right. And that's the weird thing is there's this, a lot of it is there is this concept of doing it for the greater good. So much of the you know, white people be quiet and don't talk and all this is so that you can, for the greater good, like put yourself aside for this monolith apparently. And so I have this idea of doing something. I was in a situation recently where I had to consider my own ego and I was having a very strong reaction to how a situation where i was probably justifiably mad okay but if i had reacted to that situation it would have affected this other thing that i have created and a community that i've created and i realized that there's a difference between doing something for the greater good and realizing that it's not about me okay so even if it is for the greater good Uh it's really more that it's not ever it's not about me so like this decision I made was not necessarily for the greater good because I think making that decision is you're you're kind of 
predicting outcomes that are mm-hmm. nearly impossible to predict. Yeah, you can't do like that. you yeah. said, yeah. You, they oh, the black community might have fought for these um, policies that they thought were for the greater good that yeah. ended up biting them in the ass. Yeah, that's why that that phrase "greater good" is scary shit. Yeah, that's scary shit. That's why I'm like, just God. Like, yeah. like every time you make an action in your life, just make sure that you can trace it back to a principle that's been documented in Scripture. <laughs> if you can't, you'll be good. I promise you, you'll be good. When you don't do that, then you you can't help but to serve your flesh yeah like you cannot help but to to try to take care of yourself and when you try to take care of yourself you'll see how poorly equipped you are to do that yeah it's just i find that most of my good decisions come from because the minute i'm thinking about the greater good and i hear this from the left all the time it seems very godlike you know that seems like a, a godlike greater good like determined by who yeah who determines that? Exactly. And how do you know what the outcomes will be of these these decisions? But I do find a lot of peace and centeredness in getting out of my, making it not about, realizing that it's not about me. Yeah. That I don't have control over. There are certain situations where I'm like, oh, I could make this decision because yeah. I'm pissed off and like I basically go full mafia when I get... <laughs> When I, like I, I do, it's like a I small like that. mafia like that. awakens in my heart. And I could have gone scorched earth on a very large platform publicly and didn't. And uh, I'm glad for that now with time. Yeah, At yeah, the yeah. time, I was fucking mad. Like, Fuck I had shit. smarter people than me who were like, Bridget, no, you got to think bigger. This is not about you and your emotions in this moment that you're telling yourself like yeah. it's just crazy how easy it is to lie to yourself yeah, yeah. So and justify anything to yourself exactly yeah you cannot you cannot be after your own flesh because you'll be the reason why you you're in a situation that you don't like and i do see so much of that even when they're interviewing the like antifa kit everybody's got a justification so so the thing is like at some point you're gonna have to start asking yourself like who do i serve what do i serve and what does that mean Mm. and 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 you're gonna have to ground yourself you can reevaluate later but it's like who are you serving and do you have a set of principles that you can flush everything against or you just like this is how i felt tuesday so that's what i did tuesday yeah that seems how it is but that's our society it's so reactive hey i want to fuck this girl today so i do it i fuck this girl the next day and then all of a sudden shit goes crazy and you didn't understand why. And I was yeah. like, what do you mean you didn't understand why? <laughs> That's not how it works. You're not supposed to just, they're not there for you. Like you should be in the, you should be in the service business. When you're in a service business, you don't have issues. So if you could, if you could say to, I know so many, I see it all day today because it's the blackout day where you're supposed to like. Ugh, yeah. By the music industry. Yeah. Or who's whoever. responsible for promoting songs that create agitation in the black community yeah black people don't like the shit that's allowed to be played on the music industry yeah what go ahead (laughs) um white people are like how do i help what can i do what would you tell them what would i tell a white person how can they help i don't you know with with (laughs) i don't even know like i i would i would say I, i would say this i just had this conversation today i think it's important to know you should have the confidence in your life to realize what was in your heart at all times. Mm. If you have racism in your heart, you're not asking, how do I help? If you're asking, how do I help? It probably means you're not racist and you're dealing with some emotional pressure from the outside because no niggas who are racist are asking, how do I help today? They're saying, who do I shoot? And how can I get away with it? So if you're asking yourself, how do I help? It already means that you're not the issue. So what you need to do is when you come across, I don't want to speak, definitively like that but what you might want to consider is uh, is asking people questions so that they can understand their own pain because people are attracted to white people right now thinking white people is the issue but if white people just say well what's going on with you i'm so mad about this that and the other and then you ask questions about that then you ask questions about that and then you let that person process without you having any resistance because the worst thing you can do to an angry person is resist them Mm -hmm. like well i'm fucked up because shit's this way well shit's that way because you did a b and c Mm -hmm. but do you just ask questions yeah and then then you and then you say would you like any help with this or or you just ask questions and you allow the person to say the things that they need to say because when they say what they need to say a lot of times they figure out like damn i'm tripping 
Yeah. Like it's called what? I think they call it holding space and therapy. Okay. You just have to be able to hold space for somebody where it's basically just letting somebody say that what they want to say without, you know, yeah. Putting but, them but, on the defense or but, but I think white people in in this case, I think people are going up to them. I don't want to say people are going up to them. They feel like they have to be something right now. And so it's like, well, who's making you feel that way? Well, it's this idea of allyship. Great. Who told you to ally? Whoever that person the, is. The culture. Uh, oh, I'm saying, so it's like we can't listen to the culture because the culture is very, very crazy. So we have to like, is there people in your life that's telling you to be this? And those people, you need to get clarification from them. Well, that's what's interesting is that I saw this whole thread and it was uh, uh, someone was like, hey, stop calling your black friends and telling them that you're worried about them. Yep. That's what most of <laughs> yeah. He was like, everybody keeps calling me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I understand that because that seems weirdly like if you're not calling them normally to see how they're doing. It seems racist to be calling them now. <laughs> it's it just seems fucking weird. Yeah, it's just like, it, 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 it's one thing. Like I had a white guy reach out to me, and he was like, "Hey, man, I'm watching the news. Y'all good? Yeah, that's different because it's like it is going crazy. He yeah, knows yeah, where yeah. I live, but that's not what's happening. People are like, "What can I do? I'm so hurt on your behalf." <laughs> I'm like, "How are you hurt on someone's behalf if if you're coming to me hurt?" Yeah, like like if I walked in here today <laughs> and I was like, "Um, I'm hurt on your behalf, Bridget." And I'm like, what? No, I'm not. If yeah. I come in here and you tell me about things are going on and that creates a pain, then I go, okay, now I'm hurt on your behalf. Yeah. So you can't be hurt on someone's behalf without actually having an interaction with I them. I know. This is a, <laughs> so, it feels so condescending, you know? It's, just, it's the worst like, thing in the world. <laughs> it just, could yeah. you imagine if I walked in here and I said, oh my God, are you okay, Bridget? Like, like, is everything okay? And I just kept acting like you needed me. Yeah. Like, that's so disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's the, it's, it all seems, it's it's crazy. It feels crazy to me. I'd like to take a quick break so we can talk about our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. The online learning community is offering our listeners two months of free premium membership. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with classes from Skillshare. Right now, Skillshare is such a great resource to have so you can stay inspired, express yourself, and connect to a community of creatives with fascinating classes on topics like drawing, writing, and journaling, also graphic design, illustration, photography, animation, fine art, film and video, marketing, productivity, freelance and entrepreneurship, and so much more. All of these classes can be a great way to help manage stress, practice mindfulness, and feel connected to one another. I'm looking forward to taking a lot of the accounting for creatives and learning bookkeeping basics and recording transactions. There's tons of classes for entrepreneurship and it's all particularly focused around creatives. I know that when I first started doing freelance writing, I had no concept of how to even send an invoice or what to expect from the contracts and barely knew any of the terminology. And Skillshare has lots of great resources for learning these things as you're finding your way into the creative industry, particularly if you're interested in getting into things like writing, journalism, creative writing. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash walk in where our listeners get two free months of premium membership. That's two months free at Skillshare.com slash walk in. I'm grateful I have friends in my life who are grounded in principles. Uh -huh. And I've been leaning heavily on, you know, I'm, I think like black conservative women occupy the most interesting space. I've been watching them wow. get shit for the past like four days because they'll they're batting against their kind of racist right wing followers where the racism's uh, coming out. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. they'll be sticking up for they'll be si speaking up for like black justice and yeah. against black injustice and in, in this instance particularly. Yeah, or they'll have an opinion about it and then people will be like, "I thought you were better than that." <laughs> it's like <laughs> so. So I have I have this thought and I'm gonna I'm gonna share this thought with you. I am a doer. 
I didn't know I was a doer, but I'm a doer. When I get injected, when I get connected with people, I make things happen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and I believe that you're a doer. Mm-hmm. You just kind of move like a doer. So anybody who feels any way, here's what's so beautiful about America. You get to do what you think should be done. Mm-hmm. And if it's successful, you can show people. Mm-hmm. So if you think uh, a corporation with all women are successful, then start one. Yeah. If you think uh, a, a community is better with all black cops, well, then start a police. Like you, you can do you anything can do, that you I want. Know, it is. You get to do something and show people what you've done and show people the results. Then we're all going to do it. I don't hear anybody doing anything. Because there are no doers. All the doers are at work today. Right. The people who are, I don't want to say sheep, because I don't want to be disrespectful, but the people who lack the ability to take initiative in their life and in their community, these are the ones who are running around looking for some sort of support. And that's why they're like, oh, I called five black people today to make sure that they were okay. And I'm like- I know, it's such a weird thing. It's almost like Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, like- Interesting. It's, you're supposed to call five ad, you know, five addicts a day just to check on them. Oh, it's yeah? really a way to get out of your own self. Okay, that's but cool. But it's, it's a- uh, that's a way of connecting. Yeah. So they use it as a way to like, oh, when you're spinning out and you're stuck in your own shit, call yeah. five other people to see how they're doing. It's not like, oh, when you're looking at the culture feeling racist and you feel guilty because you're white, call five black people and check on them. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's it's so like it's so <laughs> condescending. I guess the real question is like, why do you like why do you feel you're better than me? Like that's we should have that talk. Yeah. Like we should have that talk like you woke up this morning and you, you feel like you're better than me. Yeah. Because like, let's say Paul Kesaw, he the reason why I am who I am today is because Paul taught me how to achieve the things that I admired within him. Yeah. He didn't give me shit because he felt sorry for me. Yeah. Because if someone cares about you, they enter a relationship with you and they start providing you knowledge to achieve the things that you desire. Yeah. They empower when, you. To, when people don't care about you, and they say, oh, what can I do for you? Yeah, they, they disempower actually, you. You're like, a, you're like a pet at that point. Yeah, yeah. So the only frustrating part to me would be that. But I understand it too because I've been telling white people for years how bad they are. So yeah. what are they supposed to do? Yeah. They're supposed to be outside right now. Yeah. This is If you think about it, it's actually beautiful. Yeah. Like everyone is like coming together to support black people and there isn't even an anti-protest there's not a civil war there's nothing no no and all the guns that are out are just to protect property from the antifa guys and we all kind of get that yeah so it's like ain't that beautiful didn't we win race the race war isn't it over bridget yeah like today shows me that there's no if you didn't get hired because you were black I don't even know how true that is anymore because apparently everybody out today loves black people because everyone's protesting for black people. Yeah, I just I think I've I've found it really moving and optimistic and then it gets so dark so quickly. It, it's like it goes from, you know, like how, how, you'll have hours of peace. We don't even know what's going on. Like uh, I know it could, <laughs> it we, could be, it could be deadly. Could, yeah. Like we could be going, we could be having this conversation and there will be protesters getting shot on Hollywood yeah. Boulevard and like Yeah. I don't, you know, the over militariz- militarization of the police. Yeah. That's something that's, and I mean, talk. It is like too many conversations to be having at it is. once. Yeah, but you have an issue with the police. You already had an issue with the police. If you like property, you don't have an issue with the police. <laughs> so you just need to see. Yeah, but liking property is racist. The hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't understand what that means. But it's like. In 1968, uh, or not 68, in 63, whenever that I Have a Dream speech was, maybe it was 62, something like that. Uh, that's what he said. This is what he said. I want all the little boys and all the little girls to come together and love each other. Well, what are they doing today? So why doesn't it feel like racism is over? I don't know. Because it, <laughs> it's too much going on. It's too much hate. It's too it's much going still, on. Because it's still so based and there's no compassion. Mm. So there's not... It, it seems like there's so much, I, I mean, I think you're probably right. I think it's because everybody's doing this to make themselves feel better. A lot of people are doing it to make yeah. themselves feel better. A lot of people are doing it because they're enraged yep. and rightfully so. I think, I mean, this was something that even Ben Shapiro was talking about. He's like, everyone agreed. that Everyone that, agrees. Everyone agreed that that was horrific. That was 98% so, so, agreement in America. Yeah. So, so what does that say? 
Like, and what, somehow it's descended into this. I would ask. I would ask a person this: Who's outside today? Hey, what would it take for you to feel like everything is what it needs to be? Mm. And they can't answer it. Tell me what you need. I need a black president. We already have one. It's actually worse now. <laughs> like, like, what is it that you need? You need more black cops? There was black cops in. Like, what is it that you need? You need a Negro college fund that exists. Like, what is it that you need? And you're gonna realize that it's nothing. And they just have a dark black hole that can only be filled by the light of God. I like want to go out and into the community and, and the protests like, and go with you and ask these questions. Hey, like, hey, I, how can I help you? Like, yeah. How can I help you how- protester today? And they would be like, you can't help me, man. The world is racist. <laughs> awesome, man. What would you like me to do about it? Take Trump out? If, 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 Trump, was shot, if, if Trump was assassinated today, I'm going to knock on wood. If Trump, if something happened to Trump and he was removed, let's say he was just removed, people still just as mad, right? This, well, this anger... This anger is a spiritual condition. Mm-hmm. This is not an anger about anything that you can touch your hands on because that is real. The, the riots in 92 was real. When, when you lose a loved one, that is real. And all you want is the loved one back. This is not that. This is your spiritual condition catching up with itself. Oh, God, you're really insightful. <laughs> I do want to do this with you now. <laughs> I want to like get a camera and go right. out and ask everybody. Yeah. What, what can do, I? What, what can do I need? do for you? What What do you need? What would you? What is your ideal outcome? You know, I say nothing, right? Anarchy, right? They say we want to destroy everything in the name of these black people. I'm like, okay. So you <laughs> want? So you want everything destroyed then? Let's go to your house. But they don't want everything destroyed. <laughs> they want, what do you want? You want businesses destroyed? It's like they don't want anything. Nobody wants nothing. That's why they say, oh, we just want to be heard. Who the fuck's not listening right now? Yeah. Shit is shut the fuck down. There's no way to satiate these protests. Mm. And that's been true for every other protest except for this one. Martin Luther King was clear. I want this legislation. When women protest, LGBT members protest, they're clear. Like, I want a bakery that has to, I want this nigga to serve gay cakes. Like, they're clear. Like, there's pro, something yeah, there. Yeah, pro life, too. It's yeah, clear. Yeah, it's clear. There's no clarity here. Hmm. This is a, it's a spiritual condition, and it's very, very sad on Floyd's family member. Uh, Floyd's family members should be, I just, this is the worst way, this is the worst thing you could do for them, is to use the death of their family member to help fill your dark, spiritless shit that's going on inside mm. of you like that's gross like you should stop for a second and be like oh man that's disgusting like that's fucked up right at yeah. least for them yeah, now they can yeah. never like they, they can never even talk about floyd they can never even talk about what the hell is going on they can't even grieve yeah it's just, it's, it's 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 nuts but at some point you got to ask what is wrong with me like how about that like people say hey what's wrong with me that's what's f- that's what's fucking up white people right now because we keep telling them something's wrong with them and then they ask what's wrong with me they can't find something and they say something must be wrong with me because I can't find nothing I'm like well I think you're okay like yeah. you gotta chill I don't think th- it's it seems to be just a general I, there are my biggest thing is I always say this like we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh-huh. Are there changes that need to be made? Of course. Yeah. We can always improve. Yeah. Are there policies that didn't work out the way that we wanted them to and that we need to address? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is there a level of inequality that's really bad for society and has historically been always bad in terms of wealth inequality? Yes. Yeah. We probably need to look at that. <laughs> I, I mean, this is what I tell my kids because the kids, every kid that's in there says, um, and this is how, how I approach it in therapy. They say, well, I was out there, I was selling drugs to do what I had to do for my family. And I go like, yeah, that's what you tell yourself. But right. I, I think it's greed because we live in the richest country in the history of the organized civilization. We live in the richest state in the history of organized civilization. You live in the richest lucrative county and 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 like it doesn't make any sense. You cannot you want Jordans today, you want two Jordans tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like what are we comparing this to? Mm-hmm. Like what are we really comparing this to? Like what kind of income inequality? Well, I mean, I think there is generally when there's drastic levels of wealth disparity where a very small amount of people have a lot of the money because they because they're everywhere everywhere that there's a lot of money 
there's someone who took advantage of a very unique situation. Well, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I say this all the time about the the other day everybody was talking about I'm like, who do you think is going to benefit? They're like, Jeff Bezos made all this money during COVID. I'm like, yeah, because the government did that. We couldn't go shop. (laughs) So, By the way, who do you think is going to benefit when you destroy all these fucking stores? <laughs> so I'm glad you brought up Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has the most successful company in like the history of the world. I'm like, I, it was funny because I'll check my own self because I'll be yeah. like, Jeff Bezos, you know, you read a headline, you're like emotional. Jeff Bezos is going to be a trillionaire, I said as I ordered my third Amazon purchase. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, like, shit. It's I fine. It's oh, fine. my bad. But but, uh, but see, I, I saw a video of Jeff Bezos in like his garage. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. like before, like I don't know if you saw this, but it's kind of popular. He goes like, "Hey, um, I'm working in investments, and I'm starting to realize that everyone's getting on the internet. I predict that all the households will be on the internet, so we have to figure out." Blah, 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 blah. Shouldn't he be rewarded for that idea? Yeah, I mean, he, I, I I have. If you hate Jeff Bezos, you better never use Amazon. But like. People hate Jeff Bezos as if Jeff Bezos, we've conflated what Jeff Bezos did, which was like took advantage of an opportunity the way Google did, the way Yahoo did, the way that everyone does. And we're conflating that with slavery. Like slavery was like we took advantage of human property. And it's like that doesn't exist anymore. And we have to really check that. Well, there's I mean, the other day there was this headline going around. And this is the this is one of the rationalizations I see. Where it would say like, you know, the top 1% made 434 billion dollars more wealthy during the pandemic. Yeah. And everybody was quote tweeting it and saying looting. And I'm like, oh, so you're conflating people who have created a product in a business yeah. making money. And by the way, those numbers are all messed up because the f- it's usually the way they lost a ton of money when the market crashed yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they their wealth increased yeah. so really it's like 40 billion yeah. but it's it's the 434 from the bottom that it, it it's always yeah. manipulated and they and then they're saying that this is the same as breaking into a store and taking shit that's that's ignorance and it, but but it's that's like that's mainstream though. That oh yeah, is, yeah, I'll see huge people with huge platforms. So I would say this: Who agrees with that? Who has ever started a business and filed taxes? The minute that you create a business and you get an LLC and you have to pay taxes, yeah. you start a you start an education on on the economy that is second to none. Yeah. And the more you have your business and the more you file taxes, the more clarity you get. Yeah. And the more you realize what the hell is going on. Yeah. If you have never started a business, there's no way you can understand how business works. Yeah. And and it's and a lot of the a lot of the lack of money that people has is because the lack of information that they have about money. Yeah. And I'm like, why aren't you demanding that? Like, why aren't you demanding that in your schools? Like, why aren't you demanding that? Like like I'm, I'm about to like, this is how much I've learned. Like I'm about to pay off my car, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was, I needed a car and I was like, okay, I bought the car. And then they were like, the car is this much and this is the percentage rate. And then I started realizing how much I paid for the car over the five year period. Right. And it's like, you know, that would have been cheaper if you just would have like did a velocity banking strategy and maybe put everything on a credit card and then paid the credit card. There's all sorts of things right. you can do with money, but without that information, and a lot, and without the uh, accountability, you start feeling jaded. Right. And I'm like, no, I read the contract. I just didn't know anything. Yeah. And now I know. And it really should have been taught in high school. Yeah. No, we don't have any kind of financial education. That's it's that a, whole book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. I just finished Rich Dad it's Poor. So I'm like good. in the middle of my second one. Yeah, it's so good because it's true. I, all my rich fun, friends got an education in finances that I never got. So. So so what can they do other than write books and, and share the information? Right. No, none of these people that feel that there's that their cause is justified have done anything to actually personally enrich their lives. Mm. Like nothing. I got a friend who is an actress and. When I mean actress, I mean narcissist. And she's trying. And <laughs> I she, just had this conversation today. <laughs> right. And she's trying so hard to to get her acting career off the ground. And I was like but you have an incredible podcast idea. And if I was you, I would put everything into this podcasting idea. And she's like, oh, oh. she wants to be emotionally gratified, uh, satisfied from her acting career. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, 
if she's always also complaining about money and i'm like but i'm showing you that you're leaving money on the table matter of fact if you did this podcast the way you're supposed to do it for two years you can actually pay for your acting career right it wasn't enough covid hits she was forced to put all that attention into the podcast. She goes like, oh my God, I'm living off my podcast now. Yeah. And I said, well, that's no one's fault but yours. Yeah. Like that's embarrassing that you didn't see that. Yeah. So there's wealth around us at all times, but we have to learn how to spot it out. And we have to let go of our emotional things that we're holding on to. Yeah. I came down here. I wanted to be a fucking DJ. I didn't want to be in a comedy store. Yeah. But I made all kinds of money off that situation yeah could you imagine if i was emotional and being like i'm too good to dj in a comedy store yeah. i'm like kidding me i got two seasons of tv that doesn't make any sense i had to pay attention to what the fuck was going on that's my whole book the accidental pundit i'm like <laughs> i came here to be a comedy writer and a comedian yeah. and, and and i ended up in this weird i'm like a pundit yeah <laughs> you know, like how the yeah, did that happen? You were paying attention. <laughs> like then you bless yourself. Yeah, it's it, it feels very accidental, but there are you know, I just kept saying I kept saying yes. Yeah. It was like an improv. I was like, yes, and now I'll go on. See, you're also a doer. Yeah. You also create things. Like if I had you on a team, you would see things that other people didn't see and you started creating that. And it's like, well, we should if we all were doers, we wouldn't be out there right now. And it's like, well, how do we explain that to someone? Because they're so emotionally charged and they're too busy making other people feel bad about them. And I'm like, it's gotten so bad that you're literally using a dead nigga to make other people feel bad about you. That's the sickest <laughs> shit in the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, God, it's just, yeah, okay. I feel like we can really end there. <laughs> there yeah. you go. I, I, I could talk to you for 17 hours, but I we'll just keep having it. you back. Nothing makes we'll me happier. We'll just have you come back in to talk about the culture. Let's talk about the culture, yeah. Talk about the culture. Well, where can we find you? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm producing a podcast for Comedy Central called uh, Stand Up with Tom Takar, and I get to kind of co-host that. We just oh, talk cool. about stand up. Oh, nice. um, I got a whole bunch of really special stuff coming. I cannot wait to do it. Cool. When the time is right, I'll come by. Yeah, but come uh, promote anything. You, uh, all, you are stuff. always welcome on Walk-Ins. Welcome. Thank you the so much. The audience loves you, and you are a voice that I feel like there's so many nuanced. I feel like what happens with the black community in particular is uh -huh. that the mainstream media pre projects it as a monolith and yeah. treats it as a monolith yeah. and i'm like no there's yeah. so much individualism in yeah. the black community they're not all in lockstep with each other and exactly. that's like fucked up to even think that you are yeah there's no black people that ride with don lemon <laughs> we would never do that don lemon couldn't sit at my lunch table in high school <laughs> the fuck out of here like that's, that's just, what he's speaking for us, right? <laughs> or Ava DuVernay. Like, come on, man. Like, those guys. She's another one, too, that's crazy. You're, you're not, I don't understand. She's rich. They all are. Yeah. They yeah. all are. I know. But they they're all... they're talking about, uh, it's crazy to me to be like, you're talking about this system that's like. Supposedly, that made you rich. That made you. That like, was like, like Taylor Swift. I was like, I was like, I was like, come on, guys, you're rich. But that was like um, Ta-Nehisi Coates. I'm like, you've made millions of dollars writing the same essay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to and like. he's a great writer. But, but see, I'm like, I don't like. Who, that's a weird thing to me. Like, who's breaking that down? Like, who's like, like LeBron James was like, he knew he was going to be a millionaire from the time he was 13 years old. And so he could oh, he, he couldn't even talk until he was five. So what he had 10 years of oppression and then the last year. He, <laughs> <laughs> but the, but I hear LeBron James talk. He's picking cotton his whole life. <laughs> like, like I'm like, what's going on? It's such a weird disconnect. That's very like you have rich people complaining about their shit. It's like, just a weird it's. I understand. It's much easier for me to hear from like poor people, and there's so many poor whites too. So, oh, um, feel, all those. Are, that's the true minority right now because yeah. they can't say shit. No, can you imagine you're if poor for, whites were looting? You're you're <laughs> forcing you're forcing people in the hills of Kentucky to be like, at this point, man, fuck all niggers. Like, because they're like, I'm struggling too. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's shit that I'm dealing with. It makes it worse. It's that's the that's the weird thing is that. I do feel like the media wants a race war. 
You know, oh, absolutely. They want this. Of course they're so they do. thirsty for it. It's crazy. When I saw that they did the blackout thing on Tuesday, I was like, oh, oh, you're in cahoots. Because yeah. everybody knows that the reason why we're out here because we feel purposelessness. And so you're going to make stores shut down. I was like, oh, you're sick. You no longer care about anything but yourself. Wow. You're trying to, you're trying to uproot everything. We need to go to work. Like, yeah. Because that's how this started. Without COVID, there's not this. Yeah. You remove a man's purpose and his work or whatever, and people start feeling weird and doing yeah, weird shit. Yeah, and they're isolated and then they're online all day. Yeah, it's like the worst combination. We did such a really poor job of making sure that 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 people who couldn't work were taken care of. Like yeah. there's I'm telling you right now, if you would have came out and said all student loans are frozen, all private, federal, they're all frozen. Huge relief. In yeah. LA, if you said we're not gonna do parking tickets for the next two months, another huge relief. Like those little things yeah. would have been so but they said, I don't know, apply for unemployment. And then you go apply for unemployment and then you can't get on a website. And yeah. then that's like, you're just feeling weird. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. No, it's it's been it it does feel like I always say it, it's like we are in a simulation. It just feels too Crazy. it's like too <gasps> If I was writing this movie, I'd be like, they no fucking believe, way. They wouldn't believe you. No. They wouldn't believe you. No. They're, uh, if this season of America ends with aliens coming, I will not be surprised. Like, yep. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 nuts. But uh, I have a lot more clarity today. The last couple of days, I was really worked up. I just, I'm really just curious, like, what were you worked up about? Uh, The fact that, that. I had a sense like people were trying to make me feel sorry for myself uh, like because I'm such a prideful person yeah. and, I, and, and everything that I haven't achieved in my life, I believe it's because of me and my lack of the shit that I'm working on. Yeah. And so for someone to be like, I'm actually the reason that she didn't achieve what you achieved and I'm so sorry for that. Is there anything I can do today? I'm like, like, bitch, who are you? Like, yeah. I'm my own issue. You're yeah. not my issue. Like racism is a thing that believe it or not, it could, you could... If you're smart enough and you're spiritually aligned enough, you can use it to bless you. Yeah. But no one would even think about that. In what in what way? If you understand anything, you know how to bless it. Like if you if you understand what's going on, you can create a counter demand and you can take care of business. Mm -hmm. Like Chick-fil-A is straight. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, why are they straight? Because they don't open up on Sundays. Because now there's people like there's people who go to Chick Fil A, be like, man, I'm serving God because I eat at Chick Fil A. Yeah. But, but in a in a godless world, so I'm like, it doesn't matter what's going on. Another thing that was happening too was that, uh, but I was extremely frustrated about how hopeless I was made to feel. And that that bothers me because I always felt like I was able to. Who kinda, who is make like where was this these feelings coming from? These punk ass comedian quotes putting a camera on themselves and i'm gonna apologize for my white privilege oh god i'm like yes was this actually happening i yes yes there's so many comics who are like i'm gonna apologize for my white privilege i'm like yeah fucking open micer yeah like i'm a college graduate like yeah that's embarrassing that you would think that like there's comics who can't even like like fill out a, a, a application who are degenerate potheads yeah. who think they need to apologize because they were in my way. Yeah. I was like, that's never been in it. Like, no, like you've conflated yourself. Like this movement has got you thinking you're so dope that you need to apologize for your dopeness. Yeah. That's what's so <laughs> fucking crazy. That Weird. point right there is what's so crazy to me is that you have successful black men like LeBron saying they're oppressed and you have loser white people apologizing to someone like LeBron. That's why I was joking, like laughing at Ice T. Come when he like came after me. I was like, "You're the one in the mansion." I'm just makes a, no sense. It makes no sense. At all. I'm like, they're not coming for. They're not coming for me. They're coming makes, for you. Yeah, it makes no sense. But once I understood it, I was like, okay, I understand it. You got to get off that because you're gonna do too much. Yeah, but like that's like that's I, that's an interesting perspective. It's so weird how the left can be so racist and not be aware of it. Yeah. They're the most racist. Yeah. That that's They don't even understand. They it. don't even see how that could be possibly racist. Like how can I am doing this for them? Like you, no you're not. You're not even asking them. No, you're doing this for you. Yeah, all work for other people starts with a conversation with the other person and a request from the other person. <laughs> yeah. They say, "Can you help me out?" 
But then there is this kind of pressure by the culture for white people to, you know, get bend the knee. To what? To their privilege. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, what does that look like? I don't know. What does that look like? If I put up a GoFund right now and say, hey, GoFundMe, uh, I'm black and uh, I need your money. How about this? I bet you could get tons of money. You but should we would, try it. I know, I know a kid who did that and he did it, right? And so I'm like, okay, I could do that, but... <laughs> You're still gonna feel that way. Like if you gave you think you think there's a white person say, Hey man, I donated ten thousand dollars to some niggas go fund me, I'm straight. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, you should totally do it. Yeah, but he would still feel like shit and somebody would be like, Just because you gave the money doesn't mean you're about the cause. Da, 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 da. You should still do it. <laughs> you should start a go fund me just because I'm black. Exactly. I, I, yeah, give, hey. Give me money because I'm black. Reparation. <laughs> I would say all your money will go back to the black community a hundred percent. That's like they're always asking me for like hope to donate money to yeah. like that when I go buy food. They're like, can uh -huh. you donate to a shelter for a dog that's on the street? I'm like, every penny I just spent <laughs> for a dog that's on the street, all of the money for your GoFundMe, like it can go back to the black community. It just goes to your Exactly. Family. I'm not telling a lie. Yeah. <laughs> so so like, like. My community, I mean my family. <laughs> <laughs> so so you said like you had an issue, right? And then you you didn't like the way it went down and you wanted to move a certain way about it and to your better judgment that you didn't do that. Not better judgment and like better angels and better people who I consult yeah. because I know they'll talk me down off the ledge. Exactly. But. And because I meditate and because I believe in like a creative a creative force but in that moment whatever triggered that emotion Ooh, boy there was a real thing and you could have reversed it that day what the hell is that thing for these people right now today because what you experienced was a real triggering event that had real emotions attached to it and then you needed to process that there's no triggering event for white people and they're just looking for shit to help like there's nothing you can do there's like there's nothing you can do and there's no way that we can start. No one gets to grant you're free from your white privilege. Like I should start a tattoo shop that says, come in, donate a thousand dollars. You get a tattoo that says you're free from your white privilege <laughs> shit and you can go on. So anytime there's an issue, you say, I got my tattoo. I'm good. There's no one can do that. Right. Really, would, <laughs> that's really funny, too. That should be part of your GoFundMe. Yeah, we're doing tattoos that say, hey, hey. if you donate to my GoFundMe, you will be free of your right, white privilege. And you can free and you can just <laughs> go to sleep guilt free. <laughs> it's not a, it's not even a thing. I know I got into it with uh, I, it's it's been an ongoing problem with me and just the general public. I love you on Twitter, by the way. I just I, I thank you. I don't. You know, I, I my biggest fear is that I'm I don't want to hurt people. I have you know? never, so feel, never I, saw you do that. Yeah. I know my intention in my heart is to not hurt people, but I am accused constantly of carrying water for Trump and hurting c entire communities. Yeah. Entire communities. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> entire, you like you like the avatar you're hurting them or I, something? Just, I don't <laughs> know and it, i get this a lot and it is upsetting you know i get yeah. called racist all the time yeah. because um here's what they don't want to tell you more black people are with trump than against them when i mean black heterosexual black men oh yeah they love him they're like they're cool with him like because yeah. they don't give a shit yeah so like when people say trump's racist what race are they talking about and more importantly does he matter no like like does the government matter at all? You know who's the most uh, per capita successful uh, group of people in America? The Asians. You know who's the less politically active group of people in America? The Asians. Oh, they're so smart. Yeah. <laughs> I asked my my nail woman before they went out of business. I was mm -hmm. like, hey, I, you live down in Orange County. Like, what's in your community? It's like very Vietnamese community. I'm like, yeah. and she's dead silent about politics. because oh, yeah. She knows she's in you know santa monica yeah, yeah yeah and she's like i was like so is it is it a pretty like republican and she was like oh i don't know like, just play <laughs> dumb. i'm like you're all yeah. voting red down there but the, but the asian community is th here's the question why is the asian community thriving without being politically active <laughs> like they don't vote bridget they don't register why are they thriving because <laughs> they don't they don't they just work because they have personal responsibility and when they have children they make sure that their children are prepared mm -hmm. what we have is a generation of people who have not been prepared for anything mm -hmm. and when they realize that the world is real shit is real you should be focused on making sure that you're good making up for past time you think it's someone else's fault 
And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because the richest community in America doesn't, they, they probably don't even know who the president is. If you ask them, like, who's the president? Like, I don't know. I just. And if they know, they're, they're going to act like they don't. <laughs> act like they don't know. They're going to be like, ah. yeah. they just keep their head down and work for the most part and yeah. work hard and go educate, you yeah. know, education. It, it also sucks, too, because the platforms that we have for, for, for the conversations, we've connected people together, but we haven't podcasting is amazing but we haven't allowed for conversations because the, the people that are on twitter are just saying cute shit and getting attention i don't tweet that much but this shit has got me in i'm, I'm you ha- should tweet though. i'm Your having so, so much fun it's so fun to me now Your i was twitter like is, i <laughs> even the other day the one which was the one that i shared that was so funny i was dying laughing i'm like i because i haven't seen you tweeting it i don't tweet i don't i don't like, never tweet coach t is so funny when he does tweet i wish you tweeted more yeah, I'm often gonna, i'm gonna step it up but so the tweet is like like okay cool that's one thing but what really needs to happen is someone needs to be able to be like I'm sorry for like, okay, like I have these open micers who are going on Instagram talking and apologizing for their white privilege. <laughs> their whiteness. Yeah, I can't engage with him. Like I want to be able to be like, do you want to talk about it? So that he can talk about it. But he just put his feelings out and now he feels better and now it is is what it is. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, that's like that's crazy to me. I was in, I was working on a, a podcast and we had some guests down in Viacom and they were like, uh, hey, can I get this writer job? And the guy was like, well, you know, they're not they're not taking any more white male applications anymore. And the guy was like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. And I was like, if somebody said that shit to me, I'd burn the whole fucking building down. Yeah. Like if somebody said we're not taking no more black applications, I'd be like, what? Yeah, I would fuck crazy. that whole thing. Like for you to allow that, you're actually participating in the issue. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, it creates it, it cre- creates grievances. Like just say, hey, here here are the expectations, and if you meet them, you meet them. It is what yeah. it is. Or even if 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 in your head you want some diversity, just shut the fuck up about it. Yeah. But now in Hollywood, it's like open season on white people. Yeah, yeah. It is. I it don't is. understand that because I don't. How's that going to help us? It's not. If I killed every white person. If I, how about this? If I made every white person vanish, are we all fixed now? I don't understand. Yeah, no. It, it it's again. It's it, the, I say this all the time as a woman. I'm like, I don't want to be treated with kid gloves. That whole believe all women shit. Ooh. I was like, Ooh. no, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want that. Yeah, there's I some want shady to, women out there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and you are acting like I'm somehow on this pedestal of humanity where I'm untouchable because yeah, I'm a woman. You can do no wrong because like, you're a woman. No, I'm I am capable of just as much evil as any human, no matter what color they are or yeah. sex they are. It's just, that's that's why the dividing everyone up into groups and the- It's brutal. It's not good. It's that, not good. That's why I say, I mean, I know I'm like, I'm on, I'm on such a Bible kick, but there are no races in the Bibles. They're yeah. just tribe. As a matter of fact, this black and white shit only, I think, exists in America. Everywhere else is tribes. Like if you go to Africa, no one says I'm black or I'm this. They say I belong to this tribe mm. because black is just a corporate designation. It's a color. So is white. Like there's white people from all different parts of Europe and they live in this country. And in this country, they're in different parts. Like the white people in Maine ain't nothing like the white people in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, why are we acting as if they're all t- kind of together? Yeah, I know. It's that's that's the that's the unsettling part of it all the the saddest thing is it's like if a black person wanted to do something today would anyone listen to him what do you mean hey i'm coach t i have an idea for legislation would they listen like maybe i i, I would i would like to think so yeah but it's like i, I saw hope so i saw After kill, all this talk i saw killer mike and i saw all those people in atlanta and not a soul listened to him the reason why mm-hmm. i said that is because if it was about black people, we should be able to push what it is that we want to push. But what black person's pushing anything? I just saw black people. I saw T.I. I I saw I saw I saw all these people say, please don't do this. And no one listened. Right. No one's listening to black people, but they're they're marching on behalf of black people. Right. Confusing. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a really good point, too. So many mixed messages. Like I thought like when 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 the LGB when gay let's say because it started with gay so when the gay people protested it was pretty clear what the issue was and what they wanted to do about it. So what is the BLM like mission statement? Black lesbians matter mission statement. What is their what's the what are they what do they want? Who knows? Have you even heard them talk? <laughs> <laughs> like like have you? 
It was a better question. Colin Kaepernick, what does he want? A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him money. He got I a know. settlement. What does he want? I got shit from my tweet about him recently. They're like, if you cared about this movement, if you cared about black people, you wouldn't have given Colin Kaepernick shit for his Nike deal because I had a tweet that went viral. And I was like, all these people are making money off. The-. It, was my- yeah. it was all about how capitalism always wins. And mm-hmm. I was like, Kaepernick made money off this. Nike's getting money off of it. And what, what did what did Colin Kaepernick want? I think he wanted to be a. Did he want a job? Exactly right. If he wanted a job, why did he turn down jobs? Did he turn down jobs? <laughs> yes. He what? No one knows what he wants. That's what I'm saying. No, he doesn't want anything. He wants anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he doesn't want. He was a quarterback. He quit, and then he didn't quit though, did no, he? He did quit. Oh, he quit. And then when Denver was looking for a quarterback, he said, no, I didn't want it. He wanted a special kind of a deal. I'm like, what are you talking about? He didn't want to play. He never wanted to play. So what did this guy want? What does anybody want? That's what I'm saying. Like, I know what gay people want when they get their shit together. Right. There's a fucking motherfucker didn't want to make a cake with two men on it. I got a problem with that. I want that motherfucker fired. I want everybody to shame this dude. And I want a new legislation. Right. Now, everybody got to make cakes with two men on it. (laughs) You won. Congratulations. Colin Kaepernick, I don't know what you want. I want to play football. Okay, play for Baltimore. Nope. Play for Denver. Nope. You want to do a tryout? Yeah, I'll do a tryout, but then I'll switch the location and make it all fucked up and make it and, weird. And, <laughs> and turn it into a Nike campaign. Exactly. It's yeah. like, what What does he need? He want money because he's poor? Well, Nike now Nike takes care of you. Here's what's insulting is that they use people like Muhammad Ali and say, well, that's what you should do with your sports platform. And you have LeBron James, Colin Kaepernick, and whoever the fuck, uh, Shannon Sharp, all these guys that think that they are the protesters. Right. Muhammad Ali was against the population, and he went, he, they took his, I don't know if he went to jail, but they took, they stripped his ability to earn income. He couldn't fight anymore. He was unpopular. LeBron James works for Nike. Yeah. So you're not an activist. You're in, you'll do what Nike says do. Yeah, yeah. Like he's not going against anything. And when everything that Nike does is accepted by the media. So it's like we're not we're not seeing activism. Yeah. We, that was why I got dragged the other day cuz Don Lemon was going off and he was like calling out all these celebrities and athletes and he's I like you all need to call I speak up and I was like and I said Don Lemon is the arsonist standing in the house asking everyone else to put out the fire and yeah. the left-wing media came after me they were like do better i was like this do better how can you not if you can't see this i can't help you see this yeah he he got all the people to say <laughs> he gets so, everybody riled up into so, a race war so, so, and, so <laughs> then he needs so, celebrities to risk their brand essentially yeah and come out and and he's shaming them all publicly and it's saying ridiculous. you're not doing enough if he would have did that to a real person, they would have seen him, like a real, like a person who's like I'm real and I don't care who gets who approves like of you. me. Yeah, yeah, like me, like oh, I gotta, I gotta put hands on you. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, like they would really go at. There's a, there's a, a tone that people have. But what he did is he manip- he manipulated people who have these corporate, you know, entities and. And then so the response to that is the music, the music, uh, people come out and they say, hey, we're gonna do a blackout thing, and I'm like. <laughs> and then Black like, Lives Matter got mad because it blacked out all of the information and they were like, this is like a case study and what not to do because now all the information has been co-opted by all these white people yeah, yeah, and, with black <laughs> pictures. And so I'm just and I'm looking at it and I'm just like like how dare you music industry? Like yeah. how like how dare you allow the shit that's allowed and 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 blasted to our black culture, like I don't get it. Every song has fuck twelve, fuck cops, like yeah. it's just accepted. Yeah, it's accepted to do whatever the hell you want to do in 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 hip hop, and all of a sudden, it's like I don't I don't understand. Like how are they not guilty? Like how are rappers not guilty at this point? No, they're not. And I love hip hop, but like, how are they not guilty? Gavin Newsom basically said yesterday that we shouldn't. What did he say? Oh my god, it was crazy. He basically said about the looting. Yeah, he said the blacks aren't responsible for what's going on. We are about the looting. See, I fuck, I fuck Gavin threesome up for that shit. Like, like, <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense to me. Take all the agency away from the people who are actually out there looting and you're somehow the one who's responsible for this 
Yeah, I don't understand. Like how I'm confused. How is that not infantilizing though? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. How how is that like a normal and appropriate response? That seems so racist to me, and and like a weird inverse kind so, of so way. So you asked where my frustration was coming from. It is that. Yeah. It is. It is like oh, you're just using struggles that I've actually had. Like I've actually had racial struggles, and you're using it to garner attention for yourself. Ooh, gross. Yeah. Like like. <laughs> Like I know who you are, and it's just and it's just weird, and I I don't feel I just everything I can there's an opportunity in everything, but I'm like, that is that is sick. Like you're a special kind of person. Like could you imagine if 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 I did that with rape? Yeah. Like could you? No, I know. Like could you imagine if someone got raped and everyone was protesting and then I and I started acting like these guys, I'm like, Ooh. started making it about me and. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. And then taking responsibility and saying that it, it's like a weird, it's so, it's all so weird. It's just so, so I like, feel like I'm living in a crazy town so, world. So, as, so imagine if everybody who's uh, kowtowing to, these, to, the, to the black energy, supposedly, if you just re- replace the issue black with rape and see what they feel is comfortable. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry I raped you. Like, no, nigga, I didn't rape you. Like, of course you wouldn't. Like, yeah, you would yeah. be like, ah, that wasn't me. But why do you feel so okay with with this? Because you would never say that. No. You would be like, nah, fuck that. Like, I, that's not me. That's fucked up that it happened to you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take responsibility for other people's tragedy. Yeah. That's bizarre that you would do that. My yeah. motherfucker's looking for a come up. Like, people are looking for a come up. And, and believe it or not, black people are as silent as they've ever been. When I mean mm-hmm. black people, I mean niggas in my circle, mm-hmm. non uh, non entertainers who are heterosexual. Mm-hmm. You don't even hear these guys right now because they're just laughing and working. And we're, they're laughing and they're working. Yeah. Nobody rides with non lemon. Like nobody gets like we was hanging out with some rappers the other day, like 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 real rappers, like real hardcore, like like uh, Benny the Butcher, like Freddie Gibbs, like these dudes are the realest rappers, and they were like, "This shit is stupid, stupid." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "How you feel about Trump?" He's like, I'm a "Millionaire, nigga, don't give a fuck about Trump." Because I come from a place where you don't worry about nothing but your pocket, right? And so you don't get caught up on who the president is. You don't become politically active. That's not a black. That's this not a hood why thing. Chappelle is so like, thank God for him yeah. every day because he's just he he called this forever. Yeah. When he was talking about voting and in line, and he was like, "He doesn't care about you guys. He cares about, <laughs> you know, he's helping me. <laughs> I'm the millionaire." Yeah, it's but, just uh, bananas. It's crazy, but I'm like, we're such a minority. Like, like I, I think there's a culture of black people who, when I think black, I just think of people who grew up without shit, and I don't necessarily call it a a color because I know white people who grew up without shit and we, I find myself to be real connected to them. Right. Like if you grew up and you really didn't have shit and you knew you didn't have shit, you move differently and you have a different attitude. Yeah. And I'm like, well, don't we want to empower those people? But we're not even talking to those people. Mm. Like these people, like actors and shit like that. That's weird. Like that's not a thing to do in the hood. Like, you know, if somebody's like, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be an actor. Like, what? You sound weird. Like, what yeah, do you mean? Yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna join drama? Like, like what? Like, what does that mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I'm like, the black culture, the way that I know them, this is all laughable. Mm. Like, this is just comical and laughable because niggas don't give a fuck. Now, there's some people who are affluent and they move differently, but niggas I know are like, it is what it is. Like, yeah, this yeah. Is, this is hilarious. I mean, it's funny. It's cause it's a very similar to like my brother and his friends. They're during the whole like all the protests out here after after uh, Trump won, uh-huh. he called me joking. <laughs> he texted me the other day. and goes, "What'd you get? <laughs> What'd you get? <laughs> like from, from the looting?" Oh, he's man. like, "If it keeps going down, can I send you my Christmas list?" Like, <laughs> he's just like this. You know, he works and he's a first responder, so oh, wow. he's like, "We gotta work. Who do you think is gonna keep this country moving?" Thank you. 
thank you. Real people are working. Yeah, like real people are working. And I, I don't want to insult anyway because I know there's some people out there that are like, man, I don't want to be insensitive. Because I think a lot of what we're seeing out there is people trying very hard not to be insensitive. Totally. But it's like I think it comes from a good place. Yeah, yeah. I think like, people are like all of it. Ninety percent of it, I yeah. think. Is, We've been telling white people that they're evil for for so so long to the fact that other white people are now telling other white people how evil they are. <laughs> so they're waking up like, damn, I must be fucking evil. And it's like, damn, what did I do evil today? Yeah. And they don't even know what's going on. You were born white. That's what you did evil. It, it's almost it's weird because it has become, in a strange sense, a religion. Yeah. And James Lindsay, who studied tons of critical theory, yeah. has talks a lot about this. And he's like, and whiteness is the original sin. Like yeah. in this kind of woke religion oh, yeah. and ideology, wokeism. Yeah. This I concept of whiteness, if you look at it from a religious standpoint, is the like original sin that you have to that you're born with and you have to atone for. Yeah, I I've no I, I don't it didn't make any sense. Like there's <laughs> it, a lot of it is greed. Yeah. Because like this is like you got to realize like this is like um, if you're in a classroom, right? And the teacher says, hey, uh, we're going to do a, a quick uh, hunt, seek and find. Like we're going to go looking for shit right now. You got 30 seconds to go find a slip of paper. If you find a slip of paper, you don't get homework. And everyone's running around. And if somebody finds a slip of paper, he's like, yes, I have no homework. But you have homework. Like it takes a level of maturity to be like, this wasn't my day. Next time. I'll look different, look faster or yeah. some shit like that. But if you don't have that maturity, you go fuck him. Yeah. We're going to fuck him up. <laughs> fuck him. Like how dare he not do his homework and we got to do homework. And then if you're a really weak piece of shit, you start telling other class members, Hey, we should fuck him up. Yeah. And then like, yeah, we should fuck him up. Yeah. How dare he get lucky or how dare he enjoy his blessing? There's a lot of that going around. Like you got to be at peace with yourself in order to, allow yourself to enjoy someone else's blessing. And that's a humongous spiritual deficit. Mm. Like I got people around me that if something good happened to them, I'm like, man, I'm having a better day because you're blessed. There's people that if I came up, they'd be like, what the fuck? Fuck him. What about me? Yeah. That's, that's, you got to deal with that. And I think too that, you know, I know that there's not enough. I, I'm an addict, so I know more is never enough. There you go. And so I have to ask myself when I'm like, where's mine? <laughs> I'm already here, A, and yeah. B, I don't know that the struggle keeps me working hard. Mm -hmm. I've had, I've Gives been in purpose. situations in my life when I've had a lot of resources that weren't even mine because I was with a rich dude. Yeah. And I was fucking miserable. I had mm -hmm. no purpose. Yeah. And it keeps you hungry. And I think now, like, God, if I had made millions of dollars already, I, I probably would have, like, stopped doing all this. And maybe I'd be chilling in New Zealand or something. Exactly. But that's obviously not yeah. my purpose. My worst my worst year financially was my best year financially mm. had made so much tv money had made did chris rock's album made mm. a bunch of money got really big fact checks and because it came so fast i i was destroyed I, had, I was fucked up yeah, yeah but now the money is coming so much slower it's forced me to understand money now i have less money coming in but i have more money than i've ever had in my yeah, life yeah. my friend in finance he works almost specifically with athletes uh -huh. and entertainers but primarily athletes yeah. and his whole thing is like they do not know anything about finance None. and i help he basically helps them when they have all that money coming in because he's like they don't they don't know they, what don't to do with it. It. they freak out and they'll go i'm gonna keep my like shitty car he's like no we're gonna get you a, a good car because you drive onto the lot yeah. you see everyone else's car you're gonna want to go uh, overboard so yeah, we're, yeah, so yeah. he helps them manage not just their money but also like the that mentality psychology. behind it yeah. yeah but what you said was was like perfect and i think that you should go out and tell protesters that it is more is never enough because <laughs> the cop has been arrested the cop has been charged well, they want the other three. Cool. We'll get them. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. There's literally nothing to stop this blackness in these people's heart. Wow. We need more of you. Oh, not at all, man. We need you. No. Nope. <laughs> well, so where can we find you online? Uh, well, I'm going to start tweeting more, man. At Coach T-E-A. At Coach underscore T-E-A. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got I to gotta, uh, stand up with Tom Takara and then... Uh, I got some very unique projects coming. I cannot wait to get these things yeah, out. Yeah, I can't wait. 
to help blast them. Oh, man. I can, thank you. So thank you for coming by again. As usual, we always try and wrap it up, and then we're like an hour later. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and yeah, come back anytime. And please, uh, please forgive me. Just kidding. <laughs> You're forgiven. I got a tattoo for you. <laughs> it's time for the weekly check-in with Bridget and Cousin Maggie. And that's a tiny okay. little bossy. She's the tiniest in the world. We are recording this check-in with two dogs in the room. Maggie got a dog, everyone. <laughs> I feel like our listeners have really been on this journey with you. They certainly have. They're going to be so excited. You have to post it in the Fetasy community. I shall. Uh, yes, I got a dog. His name is Jasper. And he was found roaming the streets of San Francisco by my brother's dog walker. Uh, and my sister-in-law knew that I was looking for a dog, so she put us in touch. And then I did a Zoom interview, and she gave him to me. And I drove up to San Francisco and picked him up, and then turned around and came back. And it's, what, day three, little buddy? He's very cute. He's so cute. He reminds me of Meghan Markle. Stop insulting my dog. <laughs> he prances. He does prance. He's got quite a... And he a was like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Actually, you know, he kind of reminded me of Mitchell Sunderland. <laughs> my friend, too. Okay. He has that fancy air. He has a fancy, very prideful air. Uh, he's really sweet. Uh, just needs some love and a good home. We're, we're getting adjusted to each other. He's a chihuahua mix of some kind. I, which I was like, ah, I don't want a chihuahua, but he's very cute. He's really cute. And um, yeah, so we're just, it's a big adjustment. And he's a very good boy. He's just got a lot to learn. We're going to, and he met Hope today. That was fun. <laughs> Hope, Hope took it like a champ. Hope is good with littles. Yeah, the little dogs. And he's fascinated by her. She's a little bit annoyed by him. <laughs> no. She loves him. Eight. No. Chewing on his leash. Oh. Um, Hope is, Maggie's a much stricter dog mom than me. He's good <laughs> at, he's good at no. Yes, he is. Good boy. He just, we, we've got a lot to learn. It's okay, buddy. But he's so cute and he's doing a really good job. Yeah, it takes a minute to adjust to being but a dog owner. He had the most traumatic experience today. It was so. Like, I'm, you know, crate training him so I can leave him alone. And he likes the crate. He doesn't mind the crate. He likes being in an enclosed space in a little den. And uh, But he doesn't like it when the door is closed. And so we're getting used to that. And I'm just kind of getting him in there. I was, I was in the kitchen. I had him in the crate for like 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, I thought someone came in and started murdering my dog. He was like screaming. And he got his teeth like caught in the crate because he was biting at it. And he was stuck and he freaked out. Yeah. Like freaked out. And I freaked out because I was like, oh my God. And I couldn't get him loose for a few minutes, for a few seconds. And it was tough. And then like my neighbors were running outside being like, where is the dog that's hurt? And I had to like shout and be like, he's okay. He just got stuck and freaked out. But yeah, that set us back a little bit in our training. But he got back in there. He's okay. Poor little guy. He's been through a lot. Yeah. He has been through a lot. Yeah. He's but. pretty prideful for someone who's been through so much. <laughs> I know. I think it's just in his genes, the he, way he prances, prances Maggie, along. Maggie carries herself like a queen as well. <laughs> it's just the genetic, the lifetimes of being some kind of royalty <laughs> in all of her past lives. This is Bridget's theory. I was a starving pauper <laughs> and Maggie threw me crumbs. <laughs> From her carriage. If you were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you, Bridget? What's been going on? Nothing. Well, the world is very <laughs> boring. I'm worried about America, deeply concerned. I'm getting called racist a lot online, but what else is new? Mm -hmm. um, everything is just a binary, I, but everything isn't. But uh, online and in the world and... You know, there's there's an enormous amount of pressure. You know, you, you want to talk about feeling psychological pressure from an ideology. And it's definitely, I think we can all agree that racism is bad. 
and that what happened to George Floyd was horrific. Yeah. And most of America agrees with that. Yeah. And so I see it as ultimately very promising. And I think that as, you know, Coach T was saying too, he's like, what's the, like, we did it. We solved racism. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously that's not, you know, we haven't solved racism, but I feel like there's this, I think I keep calling it narrative whip, whiplash. The swing that everybody's trying to act like didn't happen from we need to lock everyone up and it's for grandma to the images of thousands of people in the streets, which is uh, like, good, that's inspiring. But don't act like two weeks ago, the same people who are out there in the streets, many of them were online shaming people for being like out. grandma killers. Yeah. yeah. Or even daring to suggest that we should open up. Right. And somebody posted on Twitter, uh, I get emotional, like even thinking about all the people who died alone and all the people who couldn't bury family members, couldn't go to funerals. And, you know, if you even dare say any of this, you are essentially a racist because you're not caring enough about because the real virus is white supremacy. Right. And this shit is insane. It's divisive. It's toxic. It's regressive. It's not true. Right. It's just unfair to put people in that position. People can all people can care about civil rights. They can also be upset that they had to cancel their wedding. And now there's seemingly no problem with thousands of people intermingling every day on a regular basis. Right. I mean, I can't, we can't even have 10 people at an AA meeting because the city won't let us, but there's freaking, I, w I watched hours of people down at a protest smoking weed like it was a music festival. Right, right. Like it's those like, images are gonna piss people off. Everyone forgot. Everyone feels duped. Right. And I think that many of us tried to do the right thing and were on board in the beginning with flattening the curve. And then once the, f the curve was flattened, everyone's like, okay, we can like, let's start opening up. But then that kept getting extended. And it really does make me realize as much as I hate to admit that people like Jesse Kelly were right. I, I find myself thinking that, you just can't ever give the government any power like that because they will not give it back. Yeah. And I think most people thought they were doing the right thing. And now I see the head of the CDC making a statement about why it's okay for everybody's carrying water for why these protests are okay. Not to mention the water that the mainstream media has been carrying for why the looting is okay. Yeah. Like, oh, well, billionaires have been looting the American public. Get fucked right now, please. Yeah, you're not like looting they, from billionaires. And they created a product or a service that was so valuable that billions of people all over the world used it. Yeah, that's true. And like you and Coach T had this conversation and I, I agree with some of it, what you said, but others uh, things of what you said, like the wealth inequality in this country is a problem and it needs to be fixed. And it's not just all from entrepreneurship and people like hustling. It's from you know, a lot of different like laws that favor the rich and policies that favor the wealthy and, and allow them to keep their wealth and keep getting richer. And that's the stuff that it's like, OK, yeah, but, we need to fix that. But I think a lo everyone is in agreement about that. The looting is usually uh, like small businesses and people who are it's just like people own those stores, you know, it's mm -hmm. not just like even even the chain stores, someone still owns that store and is still a manager of it and you're still <laughs> costing people their livelihoods. Yeah, even if you go loot an Applebee's, you know how many people now can't go to work just when we were about to open up? Right. It's ridiculous. And I don't know, I do agree that with Coach T that a lot of it is just, it, there There obviously is an, an I, I was saying that there's a global wealth inequality, global wealth inequality that's problematic. Yeah. And right. it's always this kind of inequality that ends up in revolution. Yeah. Because the it's peasants become get pissed. so extreme right. that we're at that place now because the peasants are the peasants are getting riled up. Right. But in this instance or in many instances, 
not all of the peasants are starving. You know, no. there's, it's not, our conditions are still not horrific. And in some instances for people, they are. It was funny. <laughs> we took a quiz last night about white privilege on BuzzFeed. Uh-huh. And I got a 45 and it was like, you are not privileged because I haven't gone to, I didn't go to college. I've been in a rehab. Like I, come I from checked, a broken home. Yeah, I come from a broken home. I rent. I don't own houses. <laughs> I never had an unpaid internship. I, I mean, basically, it was funny too because I'm like, do, can I print this and be like, see guys, like walk around with it stamped on your privileged. forehead? Yeah. Like, do I get a certificate? Right. It's like Coach T and his tattoo suggestion. Yeah. Where do you Where do you get that? And it just makes me realize we're losing that focus on the individual. And I was talking to a lot of my friends today and just, you know, Kira Davis and I were talking and she's just so it's it, I do think being just like a conservative. I saw Candace Owens getting just absolutely. And I'm not a, no huge fan of Candace, but seeing the way that people talk to her, I'm like, you guys are horrible. Mm-hmm. This is horrible. We should be able to criticize people or take their ideas to task without all of these horrible eat like cruel things that we say about them as a person or right there's no room for a, a discussion anymore and there's no room for people just are like shut up you nazi and it's yeah. just like that so one of the, your podcasts it was about when people stop talking that's the end that's the end of you know, idea sharing and learning and growing. It's. I just- mean, I see everything that's going on in America, aside from the burning down of the cities, as really positive for the most. And I've and and that's the other funny thing about again being in that weird position where you're in in the middle. You end up, and I see this again with conservative black women all the time. They'll be fighting the racists in their mentions who don't think that there is any kind of inequality whatsoever or injustice. And then they'll be fighting the liberals. And Mm -hmm. I was fighting with somebody about how, you know, they're like, all these protests are bad, essentially, because they a lot of the times they end in violence. I'm like, that's not true, though. That's just factually incorrect. Mm -hmm. There's thousands and thousands of them that we've never heard about that don't end in violence because we never heard about them. Right. And I'm not for the I mean, that's the just most bananas thing in the entire world is that the people who want big government are generally most of the people who are protesting many of them Mm -hmm. and they're the ones going up against the cops and getting tear gassed and i'm like and you want more of this right like you want more you want more government and structure and control and it's weird yeah it's weird every there's just so much hypocrisy and i don't know i don't know that i online makes anything better or if it makes it all worse somehow but i'm struggling to process all of it and i had a little bit of a like rage fit the other day on twitter when i saw somebody who had been for the entire months just talking about how covid and he was one of these experts who was coming on and you can't go out and shaming people for even asking if they could go out and now he's like no this is you should be in the streets right and i like lost my mind Mm -hmm. i was like no science viruses don't give a shit about your ideology Mm -hmm. they don't care they don't care i said the same thing to conservatives when they were like we can't close down because of capitalism i'm like over all of it i don't know how to process Mm -hmm. any of it but then again i don't know that anyone does no and i worry it's just gonna get worse We'll see. We'll see what happens. Because it's weird being in LA. Yeah, it's going to get worse if there's a, not, like a major, another major outbreak all, all across the country. I just want to be on the other side of this gosh darn election. Oh, God. Can you imagine what it's going to look like in October? Oh, I want to leave. It's going to be a fucking disaster. I want to leave America and view it from another country. From a, another planet. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm just glad that space shuttle didn't explode. I know. You were so nervous. But I think um, everyone's losing their mind, and I'm pretty sure the virus doesn't matter anymore, so let's open up and let people get back to their life. Yeah, get back to work. 
get back to work, get back to just like doing things, Being get busy, going to the gym, yeah. going yeah. to church, going all the things that keep people sane. We're not allowed to do any of the things that keep us sane. The only thing people are allowed to do right now is protest in the thousands. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh-huh. <sighs> I don't know. I'm praying for everyone, though. Mm-hmm. All I keep doing is like seeing to it that my own house is in order. You know, that I that line just keeps running through my head. See to it that your own house is in order. I purged my my garage today. I've just been trying to get super organized and purging and work. Every time I start getting upset on Twitter, I just start, I go work out. I'm mm-hmm. like, just go express that energy. Mm-hmm. Go. I haven't been writing enough, but I don't even think it. I think my brain is still trying to get my mind around a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the dogs are restless. Yep. And then there are the dogs that just are so cute and like, tra la la. Uh, Yeah. And it makes a difference to just be like, all right, well, I've got to focus on something else. No, it's a huge difference. I love that. My like morning walks with Hope are my favorite. Mm -hmm. But everybody stay safe out there. Yep. Go get a dog. Just, you know, find those things that make you centered in yourself. Not like self-centered, but centered like God or religion or meditation or any poetry or the things that connect us to our humanity. Because I find that reading novels and listening to classical music and those things that connect me to my common humanity are what is saving me right now. Yeah, that's good advice. The arts and the, you know, the things we're good at. We'd like to thank our sponsor this week, Skillshare. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash walkin, where our listeners get two free months of premium membership. That's two months free at Skillshare.com slash walkin. Tune in next week for another riveting episode that will change your life, help you get out of your own way, and solve all the world's problems. I want to thank Ricochet, our composer Jared Elias, my co-producer and cousin Maggie, and all of you out there listening. This has been Walk-In's Welcome with Bridget Fettesy. I'm Bridget Fettesy, and you're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) It's the dumbest line. (laughs)